Blank check with Griffin and David. Blank check with Griffin and David. Don't know what to say or to expect. All you need to know is that the name of the show is Blank Check. Welcome to Miss Peregrine's home for podculiar castrins. Yay! Castrins. <laughs> Cas- p- po- podculiar cast. You couldn't find a line. People. There's nothing. You couldn't. <laughs> There's nothing. Um. Wait. IMDb has nothing. Like there. Uh, you want to know what they are? I'm fine. If I show you the rest, you have to promise not to run away. That's one of four. Oh yeah, I remember that when it's in, in the boat, and then yeah. she it becomes. They an just area. cut. They cut yeah. to a completely different area. Do you, you want to know what? All. <laughs> I just watched it last night. Do you want to know what killed me? That's another one. I don't remember that either. No, that's the little creepy boy. <laughs> I mean, that's sort of a good line in context, right. I guess. All of these only kind yeah, of the work cre- in context. Eyeless, oh, you know. when he's in the... Oh, Do yeah, you yeah, want yeah. to know what killed <sighs> me? Okay. You don't have to make us feel safe because you've made us feel brave. Made us feel podcast. Yeah, but like, it, it, <laughs> how nonspecific is that? It's a great line from, checks notes, Emma Bloom. <laughs> 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 Whoever that is. Here's, here's another one. Baron. And then in brackets, Emma is keeping Baron pinned against a wall by using her peculiarity hell, hell yeah Which eventually is you're gonna run out of breath and then it'll be all over death for your beloved jake and miss peregrine everlasting life for me baron takes a whiff of emma's breath Ooh, and a mint for you i don't know he has a lot of lines like that he's trying look i i had been wanting to do burton for a long time mm-hmm. and this is the only movie that made me go like i don't know maybe we should do it because it's such a bummer to end on it which is why, like, 18 months ago, you were like, we can do it now that if Dumbo's we time announced. it to Dumbo. Exactly. I was sort of like, with Dumbo on the books, this is more exciting. Yeah. There's no way Dumbo is less interesting than this. Right? Dumbo looks good. I agree. Dumbo <laughs> looks great. It looks like it's going to make to, me cry. Exactly. <laughs> it can't be less interesting than this. It can't. But, but this also, on the surface, on paper... Looks interesting. That's the problem. Yeah. yeah, it's got a look, and uh, a the kids—they're peculiar. Uh, and I never saw this movie, and I'm nervous now for Dumbo. Honestly, this mm. one because this, this is a similar really kind of it's a similar story. kind of vibe. It's a children's it fairy tale. Well, if you go like, hey, here's it's the got pitch. a circus. Tim Burton's X Men. <laughs> Like, yeah, right. He's that, no. gonna do his YA. Yeah, fiction. but unfortunately, that was it. That they were was like it. Tim Burton's X Men, and they're like, great. And he was like, uh, I can phone it in for the next year. Great. Okay, cool. <laughs> you got that right. You wrote that down. My X Men. I was trying to like. I was watching it, and I was like, what does this feel like? And I was like, it feels like uh, Michelle Haneke trying to make a Tim Burton movie. Like it has the sort of what? like funereal tone. Okay, it's like very icy. It's very slow. There's a lot of silence. It feels very hermetic. You're boring. The word you're looking for is boring. <laughs> well, I'm saying like the the Hanukkah style would be boring if there wasn't so much going on subtextually. Mm-hmm. You know, if he wasn't like so keyed into the psychology of these situations, because everything is very like slow and icy and locked down. Yeah. And this Burton's like, cool, I'm going to do the Hanukkah style, except everyone's going to seem really unexcited about exciting things happening. Sure. Certainly. I, I don't know where you're going. Come. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not no, coming no, I'm not anywhere. Go- I, I don't know where. Han- I didn't co- expect I you to say nothing, Hanukkah. I'm going nowhere. <laughs> sure. Our guest today is Emma Stefanski, the great Stefanski. You didn't introduce the podcast yet. <laughs> well, I, important, above the title Fine. billing. All right, Emma. Hi. Hi. She's the Eva Green of this episode, and that she's the most Emma important Stefanski. element. Emma Stefanski. She works at Thrillist now. I can turn into a bird. You can she's turn our into good a bird. friend. Yeah, right. She's you can turn into a good friend. Um, uh, this is Blank Check with Griffin and yeah, Dave. Yeah, it's a yeah, podcast no, 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 about filmographies. Directors have a massive water. success early on in their career. And then David's rolling to a water bottle. Give a series of Blank Checks to make whatever crazy passion projects they want. Or sometimes they just make a movie like this because, I don't know, they didn't We're have any plans money? that fall. <laughs> yeah. Right, in return, you know. Right. Um, was one, like, do you want to make an X-Men, like a you x men No. Right. Do you want, like, $15 million to do it? Oh, okay, sure, let's do it. See, That's you, how I imagine it When going you down. said the no thing, I think he was probably like, yeah, I like making movies. I don't love sitting alone at home with my thoughts. Sure. Give me a movie to make. I guess it's been, like, a couple of years since I made a movie. Yeah. Okay, let's make yeah, that fine. one. Why not? Yeah. It's Do you like want to know what it's ship. about? Oh, I'm, I figured you'll tell me later. Yeah, or you something. told me the title. I can <laughs> right. run from there. Um, it's called Podward Scissor Cast. It's the films of Tim Burton. And unfortunately, as of recording, this is his most recent film. 
That's we're right. crossing our fingers and hoping that that Dumbo will be a little bit of a return to form. I mean, I'll say this: Dumbo from the trailers looks nothing if not emotional, mm. right? right? I feel like the fear all of us have is like, is it going to be too saccharine? Is it going to be too manipulative? Sure. This movie is just like, I mean, there are a few films with lead characters this lacking in urgency. <laughs> You take we his mother have, away. We have to have a whole conversation about, is it Asa or Asa? I think it's Asa Butterfield, but I, yes, I could but be It would wrong. be two S's. Asa yeah. Butterfield pronunciation. I feel here, like it is Asa. Here's my, see, I think it's Asa too. Asa Asa. No, you just said you thought it was Asa. Oh, really? <laughs> you, you just said that. I mean, I, well, it speaks to the forgettability of his performance. <laughs> Can I ask a big question? Has anyone in this room? It's Asa. It's Asa. Okay. You can always ask Asa a big question. That's yeah. what I remember. Okay, it Ben rhymes yeah. with Asia. Producer Ben. Yeah, Ben Dusen. Mm-hmm. Oh boy, producer Ben. What's up, poet laureate? Tell me. Uh, finest film critic. Go on. Close personal friend of Dan Lewis. Continue. Mister Positive. Sure. Mister Positive. What were you saying? The Haas. I'd like you to elaborate. Fuck master. Please continue Tie with breaker. your. Uh, what is your thought? Birthday Benny. Do you have? So come my pen. An answer to my question. Dirt bike Benny. Uh, Booker. Dot, dot, dot. Are you commit. still not going to tell me what's up? I, I, here's my question for you. Yeah, okay, play. Play. Shh. You graduate to certain titles over the course of different mini series, uh, right? Uh, yes. Producer Ben Kenobi. Mm-hmm. That's Star Wars. Kylo Ben, Ben Night Shyamalan, Ben yeah, Say, Save Anything, Star dot, Wars. dot, dot. Is, uh, Ailey Ben's with the dollar Shyamalan. sign, Warhaz. James Cameron. Producer Bane. Oh, that was, uh, what's his name? Nolan. Ben 19, the filmmaker. Yeah. Uh, uh, uh Robohaz, Benglish. Mm hmm. Uh, 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 Mr. Incredible. Yeah. I'm pretty cool. The most recent one. What did we just do before Burton? God, we're really Nancy locked Myers. in. Oh, the Hosla Day. Haas, do you know? Did we do that Haas, one? Haas, do you know? Haas, do you no, know. we did Benglish. Eat, oh, yeah. drink, Whatever. Ben Hosley. Be drink, Ben, ben Hosley. There you go. There you go. What's the Burton one? I know we, we are, decided. I know it's quiet on the Ben front these days, but there's plenty to choose. Ben wears scissor hands. Uh, no. uh, uh, be, 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 uh, Beetle Bendel juice. <laughs> Bendel juice. Bendel juice. <laughs> uh, be, beetle vape. Uh, mm, okay. Mm, beetle tasty. vape juice. Okay. Beetle vape. Ju- beetle vape juice is not bad, David. Beetle vape juice is not bad, and it's a new twist. What if we don't have to put Ben's name in the nickname. This is maybe the dark night of nicknames. You know what I'm saying? Where it's like a nickname for a nickname. Beetle he's, vape juice. He's vaping right David now. Beetle vape juice. Emma, Emma. Wow. You're Emma, the you? guest of honor. Emma Beetle he really vape is juice. Vape. <laughs> <laughs> beetle vape juice. <laughs> okay, fine. I don't know. You're you're like grinding me down here. I don't have a counter. Oh, to fuck! You. I just summoned Beetle vape juice. <laughs> I said it too many times. <laughs> You oh, know he's the rule. Branded. Fifteen times and then Beetle Vape <laughs> is something. He's like, oh, what? Oh, okay, here I am. Yeah. It's He's super chill, so it takes him a while to get there. Showtime. <laughs> <laughs> takes a long drag in the middle. Okay, so Griffin, what was your Here's my question. Yeah. Has anyone in this room watched Sex Education? No. Because that's yes. a comedy. You've seen it. I have. Is yeah. he funny at all on that? He's or, nice. He's very he, sweet. He's, he's doing very sweet. Like that show. He's English in it, right? Yes. So he's got the advantage of using his regular This accent. does feel like one of those performances where maybe 80% of his energy was wasted on the accent. I think so, too. There are times when I was like, oh, you can really tell that he's That's, not American. That he's really locking he's really in, trying. like putting so all of his focus onto the insane accent. insane to have him and Chris O'Dowd in scenes together where I'm like, <laughs> neither of them are good at this accent. I know. Neither of them are American. And it's one of those where you just go, let them. Be British? Are you serious? <laughs> oh, I thought they were great. Yeah, <laughs> they nailed it the whole time. I was like, "Oh, this is a southern hey, man." Dad, isn't it weird to be in Britain? <laughs> uh, yes, son, it is weird to be in I'm Britain. I'm a weird. Floridian. <laughs> he does that, like yeah, the, the certain sometimes the, it gets whoa. Irish adjacent. Yeah. <laughs> right. We're going on trip. <laughs> Um, no, this Does is he use an movies. American accent in Ender's Game? I don't remember because in Hugo he's a Ender's little Game. English boy, right? Uh, of course, a boy with the striped pajamas. He's a little English boy. You gotta wear the pajamas. <laughs> sure. I saw that movie with my grandmother at a screening where everyone else was like my grandmother and everyone walked out being like, not since Schindler's List. And I was like, I cannot wait for anyone else my age to, <laughs> to see, see this, this movie, movie and call shenanigans on it. Yeah, that one got some shenanigans. Yeah. Um, you know, he's been around, Asa. He has. He was right around the time of the release of this film, I feel like. Number two for Spidey. And the rumor was like they're about to like sign the contract. 
Right, right, right. And then the, this came out. There were two things I heard lost him the job. Mm-hmm. One was he His did terrible performance in this film. <laughs> three things I heard <laughs> lost him the job. Okay, uh-huh. I think maybe they cooled a little bit after seeing this performance. Two, they screen tested him with Robert Downey Jr. Uh-huh. And he is kind of tall. Oh, a- 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 he is tall, yeah. A big reason why they hired Tom Holland, aside from him being a wonderful actor who's a perfect fit for Spider-Man. Yeah, he's good at it. Oh, he's that- six feet tall. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Right. And uh, Tom Holland is like. Well, he's here in my pocket right now. He's like 5'5". Five, five. <laughs> yeah. He's like sub Griff size. Sure. And Robert Downey Jr. is my size. Yes. And they wanted someone who looked like a child next to Robert Downey Jr. Mm. The other thing I heard is. As for Butterfield, Asa, Asa base of Butterfield was going around telling everyone, like, yeah, I'm about to sign the contract for Spider-Man. Ooh, and Marvel, bad. like, got really angry that he was, like, Yikes. being so loose-lipped. Because it was definitely, like, widely reported, like, they were Butterfield's like, it's, closing it's, in. Yes, yeah. right. They were like, the ink <laughs> is about to hit the page. Do you remember the guy who was kind of flat in three movies? Like, was like <laughs> yeah. you know, Hugo, yeah. Ender's Game, Hugo Peregrine. was kind of fine in... I don't like that movie very much, but I think I he's like I like that fine. movie. He's a blank slate. Nothing. It's, I mean, he's, it's weird. This performance is, uh, it's one of those things where, like, I've said this, but, like, sometimes I see a movie, like, I remember watching. I feel walk- mean being so mean to this fucking I do, too. That's why like, I don't want to rag on nice him. Old. <laughs> I don't want to rag on him. And he's in this him. sex education thing now, which, it's, I don't it's know. apparently the it's most good. watched show in the history of mankind. <laughs> sure. Netflix reporting is always, like, the first episode of sex education has been watched more than every Super Bowl combined. <laughs> <laughs> right. That, that movie where Kurt Russell is Santa has grossed more than Gone with the Wind, yeah. like, in its first three days. Yeah, not since the moon landing have this many people watched. <laughs> something the moment it airs well, it's also like they use the same number all the time it's like 40 million people yeah they have yeah, like multiple right. tweets where it's like 40 million right, people which is not suspicious this. at all not suspicious hmm. at all um just pull that one right out of your pocket <laughs> i will say like i i remember uh sitting through welcome to marwin when i was welcomed to marwin mm. you don't sit through welcome to marwin you experience it you live you, in welcome to okay you live exa- in marwin. exactly you move in <laughs> When I went for a stay in Marwin, exactly. okay, when I was welcome for Marwin and settled down, mm-hmm. uh, I, uh, like, halfway through was like, why do I like movies? <laughs> and it wasn't one of those things where, like, I disliked Marwin so much that it made me question the art form. It was one of those things where I genuinely went, like, wait, so what is it I use to decide whether or not a movie is good? Sure. Like, what metrics matter? And right. watching his performance in this, I also go, like, wait, so, like, what is it I want out of an actor? Mm. Like, it makes you question the entire art of acting. Well, the thing about this character. Yes. He's bad. It's the character's not incredibly well written. But the character, right. It's just sort of like, what's the... Tell me one thing about this character. He's sad that his grandpa died. I feel for him. Grandpas do die. Grandpas die. Especially yes. when they're in their 80s and their eyes get sucked out <laughs> of their look heads. good in for a movie. <laughs> sure. Good hook. What if a grandpa died? And then it's like... <laughs> This one of my favorite things about this movie is like, what you don't know is that you are peculiar. Oh, awesome! What's my power? You can see those monsters that we've seen already. It's like yeah. the most horrible oh. power. It's like yeah. you can see the most fucked up thing. In we the can't world. see them. <laughs> right. So you can kind Congrats. of point them out. Yeah. You know, like there's one over there. Yeah. You can just be perpetually terrified. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Do I have any other powers? No. 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 no but but you go like this movie like first ten minutes it tries to lock you into two things. One, the classic Tim Burton. Here's a California boy who's not bright and sunny like the it's rest actually of them. Florida here, but yes. Right. right. Okay, a sunshine boy, let's sure. say. Boy. Here's a pale a boy in a sunshine right. state. A pale okay? suburban child. Right, here's a pale boy in a sunshine state. He doesn't fit in. Yeah. Two is, this boy really was close to his grandfather. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. The mo- Like, the most upper end I should be like, his grandfather was the most important well, person in the world to him. too. It's like, mm-hmm. yeah, this grandpa who would tell these tall tales... Right. And they're very close. And now he's getting older and maybe he's realizing, like, was my grandpa full of shit? And Chris and Dad's like, son, let me tell you about Nazis. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> they'll fuck a man up, okay? Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> Look, he might have been a great grandpa, but he wasn't a great father. I th- I thought that line reading was so moving that I just burst into tears. I'm realizing <laughs> his now. American I'm accent. Right now. His American accent is a little uh, Mandarin. <laughs> like, you may say like I'm a, a terrorist. <laughs> <laughs> fortune cookies fortune cookies um no but but you know it's like the, the wait wait you saying chris o'dowd thought that terrence stamp was like fortune cookies he was hollow and full of lies <laughs> hollow gassed 
I don't well, know. I don't know what to say about this movie. Well, here's the important thing. All right. Stavansky, guest of honor. Yep. I'm exclusively <laughs> and repeatedly calling friend you guest of, of honor for this episode. Friend of the show. You uh, put your, your bid in for this episode because you have read the book. I read the book. By, and I did. Um, by one Ransom Riggs. Ransom Riggs. That's a made up name. No, the the notion <laughs> of this name, book is, I take it back. That's yeah. his name. He's from Florida. Yeah. Maybe this is autobiographical. Well, I think <laughs> right. My my understanding of the book is he found a lot of like weird photos that were sort of like kind of unidentified. Diane Arbacy kind of photos of yeah. posed, odd looking people. Yes. Right. But, he would but, like go to like flea markets and right. stuff and just get them. And acquire photos and they're like uh, you know, photos that have like no uh accreditation, mm. no backstory. Sure, sure. And he tried to write a book around these photos. Yeah. Which is a pretty cool idea and be like, I'm gonna create a universe in which all these photos make sense. Mm-hmm. You understand how for a publisher they'd be like, that sounds fucking cool. Sure. We need a YA we book pictures for in the like book. Right. We, we scan need, them in. We need a YA book for like Sad, lonely goth kids, you know, <laughs> in the same way that like, uh, you know, uh, I feel like series of unfortunate events at the time was sort of like the totally. the loner equivalent to Harry Potter. Mm-hmm. If it's like you're a little more twisted, yeah, a little more twisted, right? You need some snicket. It's edgy, right? It was like this is like okay, this is the the loner divergent, you know, <laughs> and so you go like, well, obviously the guy to hire is Tim Burton. And, like, in 2002, when they're trying to make a Lemony Snicket movie and they hire it to Tim Burton, he goes, like, a little on the nose. I don't think I should do it. You know? Sure. It's, like, two in my wheelhouse where I don't know if I could bring anything to it. Yeah. And then this movie, he was like, yeah, I'll do it. I have some free time. <laughs> what what changed? I don't know. But then you – I watched this movie. I mean, uh, a friend of the show, past and future guest, Alex Ross Perry, he – told me he was like when i told him we were doing tim burton he was like i just found out the other day that he directed that peregrine movie <laughs> <laughs> and i was like yeah you couldn't tell from the trailer and he was like i remember I seeing, someone was ripping him off right i yeah. remember saying like which usc graduate exactly right made a really good tim burton inspired short film and got to direct this movie at 27 i definitely was thinking while i was watching it like this is the least Burtony movie that I've seen of his that he has directed. And you Even feel though it's like got stop motion creatures until then, little yeah, twins right. who are in sacks. But you feel like <laughs> sack if a, twins. If a Burton acolyte or someone who grew up idolizing Burton got to make this movie, it would at least have the energy of someone being like, "I have to prove I can make a movie." It would mm-hmm. at least have energy. <laughs> and this—that's the main thing. This film is. So lacking in energy. So lacking. I don't want to put all of it on Butterfield's feet, but it doesn't help. I definitely like went to the bathroom in the middle of it and was like, what if I just don't come out of the bathroom? <laughs> I'll tell you. If I never. Do you want to know what hell is? <laughs> I ahead. had one of my regular bouts of insomnia last night mm-hmm. and was watching this movie and was like, at least it will put me to sleep. You keep saying this, but <laughs> and they don't. I couldn't. Uh, this Maybe put it me was to sleep. too. I was so bored <laughs> and excited. I've seen this movie already. I saw it. When it came when out. It, yeah. And I put it on and it put me to sleep. Like yeah. I made it halfway through and then I yeah. was like, I've got to go to bed. And I watch the rest of the morning. Because uh, it's boring. That's my review. Ben Hosley. We've, yeah. We were talking to him. Uh-huh. Ben Hosley texts us. Well, I didn't want to watch this movie. He texts <laughs> us being like, can I skip this one, guys? Do I have permission to skip? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then, and we were like, yes. I mean, to be clear, neither of us were like pushing back on that. And we're, I mean, this is being released in, in an opposite we're order. We're recording a couple episodes Tomorrow this we're week. recording Alice in Wonderland. And we were like, if you're going to pick one, pick Alice in Wonderland. Because at, at least it's like an engrossing disaster. It'll rev There's you stuff up. in there. There's yeah. stuff in there. Okay. Anne Hathaway is weird in it. Right. They're She's good. Great. They're better elements than She's there are in this film. And in they're worse <laughs> elements. Right. Jesus Christ. Uh, yeah. But then... I was like, but you are a peculiar child. I am. A, I was a strange child. Right. And you so, were saying like you used to hang out at graveyards. What was the other thing? I'm going to find it. What's your superpower? Name? Name? That, that was Emma, the thing I didn't what? know. Emma, we'll get the superpower question, but I just, before he ruins this, Ben Hosley said, when I was in high school, I added <laughs> no, a Z. No, in elementary, elementary school. school. When I was in elementary school, I added a Z to my name. Where do you think that Z would be? <laughs> <laughs> Knowing Ben Hosley as a name, H O S L E Y, where do you think he would have placed that Z? Oh, obviously it's Zen Hosley. It's Ben's Hosley. <laughs> Ben's. <laughs> I do like Zen Hosley. Right. I do too. Here's what I knew was going to happen. I was trying to overly telegraph that the obvious choice would be replace the S. Yeah, ben I knew Hosley. by doing that, Hosley, right. you would go for the more creative next level thing, which is Zen Hosley. <laughs> and instead, he became Mercedes Benz Hosley. Now, I didn't like cars. My parents refer to this as my Z phase. 
They call it the Z phase, mm-hmm. your Z period. I just, for whatever reason, um, like my teachers, I remember my teachers being concerned because I would be like, you have to call me Benz. And they're like, what? <laughs> no. I was right. Like, fair, I, fair answer. I, I'm going to, bees are going to come out of my mouth. <laughs> um, but yeah, and I was also obsessed with death because my parents annually we would drive to Florida and they would always put on to mystery Florida. um like uh books on tapes. I mean this and, movie is so in Ben's oh, wheel. Like a got, Sue Grafton. I got yeah. so obsessed every time I wow. saw a cemetery in like third grade like, we got to stop. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> and you're the only kid, too, so you have some power. I do. It's not like the other kid could be like, no, and then you sort of like a three to one situation. Nope. I was yeah. like, Spanish moss, creepy old gravestones. Hell yeah. We're stopping, baby. Well, here's Pull the thing. over. You go this movie. You know my name. It's Ben's. I, I genuinely <laughs> like, believe. It's not your name. <laughs> this movie automatically becomes a gentleman's six mm. if you have some take on the lead character mm. and hire a more compelling actor. Like Ben. If you go like, okay, the key is it's Ben. He's like kind of a scumbum. He's like a bad kid. Sure. And he's got right. that rebel energy. Right. Whereas this is more like he's like, well, I'm a little different. Right. Oh, how are you different? I don't know. Yeah, right. People don't like me at school. Here's another thing. What if the kid's funny? What if the kid's got a wry energy? Mm. What, what if, if he's he, still a no, loner, no, no, no. but he's sort of sarcastic? What if he's real quiet? Mm. Doesn't talk too much. Mm. Delivers everything with the same affectation. Yeah. What I about miss that? my grandfather are, are so we, much. Are we on to something? I hate that he died. Dad, we have to go to the English countryside immediately. Welsh, I need to Welsh see if the school is there. My therapist says I need to go to Wales. Because that bill, scene where The billing she's of like, this movie, I'm sorry. <gasps> Jamie is fourth <laughs> bill. It's incredible. Pre-Oscar, she's fourth bill. Yeah. yeah. I mean, when, I mean, she's a name. I'm not right. going to deny Jannie or But that's might. one of those things where it kind of distorts the movie. Because when Jannie is fourth billed and she's out of the movie in the first 15 minutes, you go... There has to be something else to her character. Nope. When I saw her, and when I well, saw the it fact- is, she's the, the like the nope. weird fake. <laughs> nope, that's not. Uh, yeah, sure. It, it turns out she she was playing it like Samuel Jackson. Yeah, yeah. That was. Wait, what were you going to say? When you I saw have her- to go to therapy. <laughs> Go to that countryside. <laughs> yes, Terrence Stamp deserved to die. Yeah. And I hope he burns in hell. <laughs> His eyes were tasty. <laughs> um, go uh, ahead. Em. When I did see that she was fourth build in the movie, I thought, I forgot that uh, Samuel Jackson was in it. Uh-huh. Uh, yikes. <laughs> um, but I had just read the book and I knew that the therapist was also like the evil character. Sure. And I was like, what if it's Janny? Right. What if it's what literally if just a, she, play? there's just an evil Janny, dark Janny, like yes. mean Janny. Right. Uh, and I was really excited for like two seconds. And then I remembered that Sam Jack Jackson is in it, which yeah. usually would excite me. But then I right. don't know, by that point I was like, oh boy, I don't know if this is going to be good. It's interesting little... too, that Samuel Jackson's in a movie directed by Tim Burton, the his hated enemy who directed mm. Martin Landau to an Oscar. Well, yes. Very interesting. Right, right. Do you think they talked about it? Well, and this is the movie where uh, Burton comes under fire from the press where it's like the whole movie is like a pasty white countryside these, children. These children might be peculiar. I'll and tell you something like, else about it. Look, I cast a black actor and people were like, he eats eyes. Is the eye eating <laughs> villain who's like, hello, right. may I dine upon your tasty eyes? Like right. that's his bit. And Sam Jack is always kind of a hand wave where he's just yeah. like, why are people getting upset? It's fun. I want I to play an eye. Whatever. Right. Right. He does like, I did <laughs> yeah, two right. movies a week. I thought it was fun. They sent me the script. I said, I've never eaten an eye on screen. He is one of those he's guys. Like a lot of eyes. He on slurps this. one up like yeah. spaghetti. And you was gross. He's having some fun in this. Sure. Eva Green's having some fun for her 15 minutes. <laughs> She's having a little fun. Yeah. Sure. Right. And I think Ella Purnell's kind of good. No. I kind of like her in this. Uh-uh. I like her. No. I like her hair. Stefanski. Yeah. Her I name is she, Emma. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Automatically. Her name is Ella. I have to. No, her, it's Emma. Her real the, name. The character's, the character's name. name. Right, yeah. Right, right, right. Her name. Her name. <laughs> Actually, speaking of my name, I actually added a Z to my name, too, when I was younger. Oh. That's right. Well, Enza, yeah. Stef- right? Enza? Emza. My friend, oh my like, God. called it, called me that, and Kindred then they just spirits. stuck. Yeah. Yeah. Now, did you have the teachers call you by that name, or was it just, like, a amongst friends kind of thing? Some did, like, especially in high school, because I yeah. had it as my name on Facebook, and, like, I guess sure. teachers, like, could sure. see that. Um, and it got to the point where, like, in college, I changed my Facebook name to my real name, and all of my friends flipped because yeah. it had been my fake wow. name for so long. <laughs> I got a lot of comments like, oh, wow, end of an era, which is, like, very dramatic. You know there are a bunch of those, like, like Darcy Carden— Mm. Is just someone who, like, when she was 12, added a, like, 
apostrophe into her name to seem more mysterious, and uh-huh. now it's like her acting her name. stage name, right? She's like, no, my name's just Darcy. I just, when I was 12, wanted to seem more interesting. Not- Darcy! Right. Darcy. I think Willem Dafoe's the same thing. I think he just thought at some point it'd be more interesting if it was spelled that way. Yeah, his name is William. Right, his name is William yep. Dafoe. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah. Come on, Willem. There are a bunch of guys like that where it's just like, yeah, when I was like 12, I thought it was funny to spell it this way. And now I'm an Academy Award nominated actor. (laughs) Oops. One of eight children. Defoe? Yeah. His brother is Donald Defoe. Don Defoe? Yeah. Um, well, this movie is clearly a lot of fun. We like talking about it. Here's (laughs) We're revved up about Peregrine. No, the billing. Eva Green, number one. Okay, she's, but she's not Peregrine. in a lot of the movie. She's not in a lot of the movie. I guess Asa Butterfield should be number one, but he's number two. And I remember seeing this for the first time when she finally enters 30 minutes and I was like, okay, finally, she's going to be the character with energy. Right. She's doing like fun, full Burton stuff. And 15 minutes later, she's like, I'll see you guys in about an hour and a half. <laughs> For one second. Yeah. She's not in the end of the movie. No, she literally appears silently just so that it's like, yeah, she's not dead. Yeah. You know, I just remember being like, oh, that's kind of interesting that like there's a hundred million dollar Tim Burton movie where it's just Eva Green above the title. Right. She must really bring it in this movie. And it must be really her I mean, film. she really brought a crossbow. She did. It's kind of cool. Yeah. Like yeah. all the posters were like, she's got a crossbow. Yeah. All the crossbow stuff. Anytime there's a crossbow on screen, it's good. That's yeah. what I'll say. Because I like some parts of this movie. The sequence I especially. There are a couple moments um, yeah. where they're like at the amusement park on the pier or oh, whatever. I like that at all. I really like I that like part. That. See, I like that. That's my favorite part of the movie. That's yeah, my favorite same. chunk. Yeah. That was Wait, when my when eyes on... really just glazed over. You mean in the, the Blackpool stuff? That's when I'm dead. That move, that, I hate when that When the EDM stuff. music is playing oh and they're like God. throwing like stuff that. at the monsters. I like <laughs> that. each other. Yeah. Ben and I are playing each other and smiling. I like some of the school stuff. Like some of the, you know, when Eva's there, you know, that that's fine. And it's more colorful. But you even go it's like... It's colorful. There, there is a lack of urgency to this carrot. entire film. There's a very big carrot. I love the big carrot. This carrot. There's stuff I like. your granddaddy's carrot. I'm just like, these kind of movies where they go like, big, here's a world you never knew big, existed. Let me introduce happy. you to the rogues gallery of characters. <laughs> mm. Usually it's like, that's the fun peppy part. Yeah. And you're like, it takes 25 minutes to get through the introductions to the kids. It does. And also I'm like, which one is this again? Like right. immediately afterwards, like, slowly <laughs> walk up these stairs. Well, like every a bunch time... of little white children. Like, and I don't remember yeah. if like, is she head child or is she strong child or is she plant child? Right. Like, I don't remember. There's Jan Svankmeyer <laughs> <laughs> who makes his stop motion, like meat and doll part puppets. And then, and I know every YA book has this, but like the character is like, I'm the mean one. Yeah. I don't like you. Right. And it's like, why don't you like him? I don't know. Maybe it'll be explained later, but I'm just a problem. I don't like the way you fold your socks. <laughs> right. Um, and he has the most fucking convoluted power where he's like, oh, yeah, let me use my power. Let me just reach into my bag of hearts. Yeah. <laughs> so I, hearts. I like his power. I mean, for me, it's like I, I like want more like convoluted. Like that is quite a peculiar power. Sure. You know? Peculiar. Um, Wait, Ben, did you watch the movie or not? That's my question. What did you? Turn well, it sounds off? like you did because if you got to Blackpool, I yeah, watched the, the whole movie. Wow. So it was enough. It wow. sort of hooked you in enough. It got me. It got me far along enough where yeah. I was ready to give up. Yeah. But then I think <laughs> it was uh, kind of like, well, yeah, might well, as well see how I, it goes. It, it, right. There was enough action with the sh- the the creature showing up. Yeah. That I was like, all right, whatever. I'll I'll just stick it out. I also feel like I was a lot more forgiving my first time because you're watching it the whole time going like, maybe the next scene it's going to start getting good. Sure. When you watch it the second time and know it never really pops, it's no. just like a slog to get through. Well, for me watching the second time, I was like, Judy Dench is in this? Yeah. Like literally, I was oh, just like, yeah. I forgot whole For like segment. two minutes? Yeah. Miss Outrageous. Abbasette. Yeah. I think th- when they cool. go on the boat and there's the bones, I'm like, fuck, I love bones. All right. I'm in. <laughs> yeah, there are like some bones. There's a little visual idea. There's some good stuff The in there. boat thing bugs me because she's like, all right, I'll tell you my secret. But first we have to go to this location. Okay, they get in a fucking boat. They go yeah. in the boat. Then you sink down in the water. Sink down in the water. Then she's got to blow air into the fucking boat. And yeah. I'm like, it takes her this long? You have to see the boat. I don't boat. care it's what you Chekhov's have to say. boat. Because that's to, you know. Yeah. They're going to Chekhov's boat. You bring leave a boat at the bottom of the ocean. It's it has to come back up. Two. <laughs> right. That's the Chekhov's boat rule. Yeah. Uh, Emma, you're a pretty uh, voracious reader in general. I- I try Emma to read. Do you, I read a lot. Do you read Emma? Hey, say what you want. I'm Emma this reads. Literate as hell. <laughs> <laughs> I like books. <laughs> wow, is that your is that your catcher? Oh I, I like books. <laughs> Emma's dancing around the studio. She's literally flexing. <laughs> um, it's her peculiarity. Like stacks of books in my arms. Oh my god! Look, she's cut. Yeah. 
She's book lifting like 200 pounds right now. That's Dead book her lifting. peculiarity. She That's can lift anything as long as it's books. Only books. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you have the same energy as everyone in this movie. She's doing the doggy <laughs> for books. She's yes. lighting the offices on fire. All with her book power. All with I'm her like book the B-boy, but it's, it's books that live it's inside my stomach. <laughs> Every time I open my mouth, it's your net. Put on out. your net, Emma. <laughs> Emma just coughed up a paperback. <laughs> um, do, do you read a lot of YA in general? Uh, I've gotten kind of back into it because okay. I have a friend who writes it now and she's published a couple books that are fun. Uh, so I try to support. Uh, tell me how you get to this book. How did I get to this book? Yeah, because I hadn't heard of it before they like announced that Tim Burton was making it, at which point I went, this sounds like good material for him. I know it's successful, but it wasn't like cultural phenomenon. It was a bestseller. Okay. It was a New York Times so bestseller. You read the charts. For a few. I like, I used to actually not do it at all because I was one of those kids who was like, I'm not going to read books that are yeah. popular. That's yeah. It's lame. Um, so I started reading a lot of weird stuff. But then like, you know, a few years ago, I was just like, I'm done being that ch- child. Should we do the books office game? <laughs> <laughs> Quiz Stefanski on the. Oh, no. On, on the, the New York the, Times? The New York Times bestseller list? Yes, or? I'm not going to do well with the that. Week that. Maybe pull it up. Maybe we'll get to that later. Okay. So you... I have no idea how to pull that up, but I'll try. <laughs> how much do you like this book when you read it? Not very much. Okay, so it's not even like your jam. No. When you, you gave hear, it a shot. Yeah. You didn't read the sequels. No. There, of which there are currently three other books. Yeah. There's four total. When you hear that he is making a movie of it, is your thought like, why? Or is it maybe he'll be able to do something with that premise? Some kids love this. I was interested in seeing it when I saw the trailer, because mm-hmm. um, the trailer is pretty cool. It. The trailer is pretty cool, and then oh, no, a I lot found of it at number one. Right? Isn't it like a yeah. Mama Cass cover? And what? it's like just big on the visuals. The trailer has like a cover of a Mama Cass song or something. I'll summon the trailer. Yeah, it was um, a good trailer. Yeah, it was good, and it's got a lot of evergreen in it, and I yes. like her because she's I like pretty her in a lot of her movies. Pretty and charismatic. It's yes. just pretty. Never doesn't play a witch. That's the only problem. Right, but this you're like, she's one of the few actors who seems like they're having fun. Yeah. Like, she is on the right tonal wavelength for this movie. Mm -hmm. And she's good in, like, the list, you know, scene where she just lists things. Right, which is like, you're like, oh, this is starting to get a little momentum. Mm -hmm. Because this actress is at least bringing her own, like, rhythm to the thing. Whereas everyone else, it's like... It feels like a movie where he edited it in a way to leave as many pauses in between lines as possible. It's weird. It's a lot of like children being some dramatic kind of, too. Some which kind of yeah. creepy song. Sometimes it's good and sometimes it's really not good. The cover's good. I mean, it's a creepy, right? It's, it's another one it's of sort creepy... of The trailer is all the boat stuff. Yeah. Like, so yeah. It's sort of the imagery's you... kind of cool though. You see her like sure. rise up to the tree with the rope. Around. Well, yeah. like, I like that stuff. She's a floaty gal. She's floating. Sure, air is her peculiarity. The lock boots. In the book, actually, it's yeah, the other girl who's right. like the main girl. It's Olive. different, right? The fire girl the is fire the main girl. girl. Oh, and then the air weird. girl is like younger. She's just like not even a character. She's right. just like, yeah, one she of the menagerie. Mm-hmm. Did they just think fire was hack? Were they sick of fire? I think they just wanted. Because like know. his love interest is fire girl. Right? And in this, they sort of set it up Maybe as there's like, no love interest. The, yeah, that it's almost know. supposed to be a love triangle because Enoch seems to get jealous of how much Fire Girl is taken by Butterfield. Yeah. But mm-hmm. then it doesn't really... Well, but then they sort of, like, pair up at the end right. when he's like, oh, I can't believe you're dead now, when she's, like, frozen. Right. And then he has that speech. Right. The The movie is, like, this sort of sub-emotional, quote-unquote, emotional arc of Enoch learning to tell Fire Girl about his feelings. Sure. Well, you yeah. know, he keeps his hearts locked away in a box. I don't fucking know. Right. It's a metaphor. <laughs> you gotta keep your heart in a box, to be yeah. fair. Um. It's only a safe thing to do. I have the first week that it's number one, which was its 45th week. Yeah. It's kind of impressive. The book? Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's what's cool about books, too, is they still can, like, <laughs> grow like that. Do you one, know what I'm saying? Yeah. One, two, three other books here have become movies. Okay. Which ones? Well, let's see if you can get oh, All right, no, let's play I the don't want to do this. Books no, no, this no, game. One, one of them's very popular, probably uh, one of the most popular books for young people in the last 10 years. What year is it? Well, we're talking 2012. Uh, this book is pretty new at that point, time. Is it, it the was, Hunger Games? No, 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 no. Think um, soapier, sadder. Divergent. No, 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 no. Um, Forget no sci-fi. Real life, real life. <laughs> um, Turned into a movie. Big hit movie. So but it's not a franchise, right? No. I think I know what it is. There's no franchise here. No, no, no. Is it YA? A These YA, are all YA. A soapy YA. It's this, a see, one this and done. is not, I can't even. It's a sad book. It makes you cry. But this oh, author, The Fault in Our Stars. Yeah. yeah. 
which as far I as, I, that. Know, as I know. So how much has it made so far? <laughs> I don't know. It's only 14 weeks. On the, it's new. It's well, newer. Fresh? Okay. And then we've got wrong. a book that's been on the list for 109 weeks. Uh, I'm not doing the other ones. I'm just doing the ones that yeah, were turned yeah. into movies. Um, uh, that was turned into a movie that stars someone we've been talking about. Sam Hill Jackson? <laughs> Think younger. <laughs> Ace of Base of Butterfield? Ace of Base. Is it Hugo? Hugo. Uh, the invention of the Hugo Cabret. Post movie bump? Yeah, maybe that's what it is. That must right, have been. Right, right, right. When it comes and then out mm-hmm. another one that's brand new, four weeks on the list. Um, Got turned into a movie much later, a couple years ago. Autobiography of Malcolm X? <laughs> <laughs> this is children's books. Um, oh, a junior autobiography of Malcolm X. <laughs> as told to Big Bird. Yes. Um, no, uh, like a mm, inspirational sort of book about you know, uh, it's be yourself. It's tough. It's a real life story. You're gonna have no, to be more I specific. So, but it kind of has the vibe of a real life story. Is it genre at all? No, 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 no. Hard no. No, and it stars a young actor. Ace of Base of Butterfield. Not him. <laughs> Think younger. A little more charming. Oh, perhaps grating. Oh, who is it? Your man. My man. Jacob Tremblay. Is he my man? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you once called him my man. <laughs> Sure. Okay. It's Wonder. It's Wonder. I was going to say the Book of Henry, but that's I mean, not a book, is it? Well, it should be published. I mean, it For is a book. For any kid who wants to assassinate a local police chief. <laughs> I wish they had done that. Like, the Book of Henry was had more, like, a uh, muscle behind it, and they had released it as, like, a tie-in book. Where it's like, now you can read Henry's book. Like, <laughs> right. go to Barnes & Noble and read a murder diary. That would be good. It has and little, it's like, like, envelopes where you can pull things yes, out. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It has right. all of the interactive elements, mm-hmm. and it, like, tells you how to buy a gun illegally. And all I'll buy that. Stuff. Like, yeah. we talked about in the Aquaman episode that there's a book that's, like, My Journal by right. Arthur Curry, age 13. <laughs> yes. It's like, being an Aquaman is tough. Yeah. This guy, Willem Dafoe, who I think his real name is William, right. just keeps coming to the beach and teaches me how to spin a trident. But like once a year and only one lesson. And then I ask him about my mom and he's like, uh, we'll talk about it later. I gotta I'll go. See you in a year. <laughs> Shock bait. Let's just review Aquaman. Shock again. bait. <laughs> now, the Miss Peregrine, we gotta, we gotta acknowledge that she runs a home for peculiar children. You gotta hand it to her. You, you, no, but okay. You, so you said the book is different. This is right. We, I wanted to yeah. conclude book talk. The book's pretty different. Yeah. Okay. So what do we got? I mean, apart from Fire Girl is more prominent. It spends Air Girl. a lot of time not in the home for peculiar children, which is the first thing that kind of turned me off. Sure. It's a lot of him looking for the home for peculiar children. It's a lot of him just being, he has like. Going back and forth. Because in this movie, he finds it by yelling at a bird. <laughs> right. He sure does. <laughs> he does. Uh, oh, look. It's a bird. Maybe, maybe it's, it's Miss a Peregrine. Peregrine. Hey, don't poop on us. I like oh, how. Come on, Dad. I was joking. When... Can you tell by the change in my tone? I'm sorry. I just had to. Like, that's the moment for I me know. where I go, like, fuck, this is going to be a problem. <laughs> right, right, where he's right. trying to play. He's not uh, improving in this. In one right, scene, yeah. it's supposed to be sad sack, sullen, like. Energetic. Well, right. right. He's supposed to go from being, like, yeah, morose yeah, yeah. about his grandfather. A little excitement about maybe they're going to solve the mystery, mm. making the joke about the bird, and then having to reassure his dad that he was only joking. Right. And everything sounds like it's Max speak. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Go on, Emma. Uh, I do like when they first see the bird. He's, his dad is like, it's a peregrine falcon. He's like, oh, like Miss Peregrine? That's like he's like, never Jesus heard of a peregrine falcon Christ. in his whole life before. <laughs> it's only peregrine. Like, Shouldn't have said anything. I know what that is. I read the My Side of the Mountain. So is the book books? less sort of like propulsive than <laughs> I Well, it sounds use like it's very YA <laughs> world building. It's yeah. very like YA origin-y, right? Where it's yeah. like, let's explain everything about yeah, how it's like, this works. Here's right. some what here's an inbreen and here's the right. history behind that. Right. And here's what the hollows are, and here's yeah. the connection. And it's just a lot of that stuff. Sure. See, I Is the there thing- a showdown in Blackpool? No. They don't go there. There's a showdown in a lighthouse. The end is completely different. So you think Tim Burton was just like, 
Can it be at a circus? Like, <laughs> Please, can well, I have a circus? Yeah, right. <laughs> the thing that like, excited me about this movie when it was announced, when it was coming out, was that Jane Goldman wrote it. Sure. And mm-hmm. I think Goldman's really smart. And we've talked about on this show, like, Tim Burton admittedly says, like, I don't really know how to tell a story. I don't sure. know the difference between a good script and bad script. I know the types of things that interest me. So he works best when someone else is making sure that the script is good and then they hand it off to him. Sure. And he had, like, gotten in a John August rut. Like, he was working with August over and over again. I was like, maybe new writer will breathe some fresh life in him. She seems like a good person to adapt this. Even if the book is kind of shapeless, maybe she'll be able to find a narrative in it. And he only signed on, I think, off of the script. So I was like, man, this is, like, big, but it's not such a big property that it's, like, built in. Mm. He must really like the material. And then you see it and you're like, I don't know, was anyone excited about this when they were making it? Probably not. Eva Green? Ava Green? She's she probably excited to it. wear like dark blue hair for right. a few scenes. And then she like, just her outfits are cool. gets a vacation in the Walsh countryside. Ding dong. Ding dong. Ding okay. Dong. Door, door time. Why are these lights flickering in here? Uh oh. Oh my God. <laughs> There's some stomping. <laughs> Multiple slow stomps. What's going on? You're bearded, Harry. It's it's Rubius Hagrid. You're bearded, from the Harry, Harry Potter franchise. The 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 half giant. Oh, okay. I, right? Am I right? That's who you are. Correct. I'm Rubius Hagrid. Okay. And uh, what was that you were saying? You're bearded, Harry. Hmm. No one's ever told you this before. You're gonna have to explain this one. No to one's me. the secret. I bet no one's ever told you what happened to your parents. What, what's happened to my, my parents? They were bearded. <laughs> you uh, gotta get a razor, Harry. So is it a bad thing to be bearded? Or maybe you just want to groom. You don't want to end up like me. You've got a, I was about to say, you've got a big beard. Lonely man living in a hut outside of a children's school. Well, Hagrid, why don't you join the 10 million people who have tried Harry's razors? Harry's razors. Harry's, yeah. Harry Potter. Well, no, Harry's uh, Harry's. Harry's Harry's. <laughs> oh boy, <laughs> Rubius, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to catch up with me. Harry's founders were um. tired of paying for razors that were overpriced and overdesigned. Mm. You know, you don't need vibrating heads or flex balls or handles Dragons, that look like spaceships. Three headed dogs. Exactly. You know, that's all that's all gimmickry. Okay? Yeah. They have combined a simple, clean design with quality durable blades at a fair price. Uh they bought a world class blade factory in Germany that's been making them for ninety five years. They've got twenty thousand five star reviews on Trustpilot and Google. And their replacement cartridges are just two dollars each, which is half the price of a Gillette Fusion Pro Shield. I know this is a lot of razor talk for someone who's obviously never shaved, but you got to go to the deep end here. Yeah, well, that, I mean, that's not a choice. I just have a weak jawline <laughs> trying to make the best with what I have. <laughs> well, Griffin, you've, you've gotten these razors. I have, you know, and I'll say this. Uh, I hate shaving. You know, I'm like not it. someone who can grow a, a Hagrid style beard no. or even a, a Sim style beard. Mm. But I don't like the sensation of shaving. And I also have very sensitive skin. Yeah, you're a delicate flower. And it, it messes me up, but I'll say this. I used the Harry's razor. I got a clean shave, and, and my skin was, uh, was holding up all right. And they give you a lot of nice products to they go do. with it. They some give you, they give bombs, you some great some stuff. Cream, some things like this. Blades really uh, really sharp. The handles, like uh, you got like a, a, sil- a silicone orange yeah, thing. Yeah, it's ergonomic. And I'll say this too. Unlike some companies, they never – We'll try to sell you butt lights. They don't assume that you have a stinky butt. They don't assume that you have a stinky butt. <laughs> well, you can get a $13 value. Me? Try- sure. Either of you. What about my dragon, Norbert? Yeah, he can too. I think it was Norbert, right? Yeah, no, you nailed it. That's it. That's, that's, that's the dragon. What the about my Harry second Potter. dragon, Norbit? <laughs> yeah, that one didn't go over as well from where oh, I remember. No. <laughs> Uh, you can get a $13 value trial set that comes with everything you need for a close, comfortable shape. It's got a weighted ergonomic handle. It's got a five blade razor with lubricating strip and a trimmer blade. It's got rich lathering shave gel. It's got a travel blade cover. Okay. Mm. It's got all that stuff. What's their policy on Grindelwald? Uh, they hate his crimes. Great. <laughs> uh, you can join the 10 million who've tried Harry's by uh, claiming your trial offer by going to harrys.com slash check. Uh, you can redeem your trial set there. 
Uh, make sure you go to harrys.com slash check to redeem your offer and let them know I sent you. Okay, so you check to make sure there aren't any dementors outside the train car window, and mm. then you get the deal? No, you can redeem your trial set at harrys.com slash check. Help support the show. You're bearded, Harry! Actors talk about, like, the uh, urgency and objective in scenes, mm. you know? Yeah, like, yeah. what's what's my want? What's my motivation here? And Did Asa Butterfield miss that? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Presentation. Like, I'm not one of those people who, like, every scene I, like, take out the, like, colored pencil and go, like, this line is based on this and that and oh, that, and I'm see, trying to sure. tie it in. I try to be, like, a little more intuitive about it. But every time I've watched a scene of something I'm in that I think is really bad, I go, well, the th- I didn't figure out what I wanted here. Mm-hmm. You know? It's not usually a didactic process for me, but I'm like, it's nonspecific. I didn't have something driving me. Right. But you go, like, if someone had just kept in the backseat the whole time, like, my grandfather was the only person who I understood, yeah. who understood me, and this is driving everything I do, and you felt that tension And I every watched scene. him die with no eyes. That was traumatic. Right. You watched him be ripped apart by a thing. Yeah. That's if you so had horrible. someone no play good. that emotional honesty and urgency, I right. think this film automatically becomes a gentleman's six. It becomes a bit of a shrug, but you go like, yeah, but it's like, whatever. It's kind of nice world building, whatever. The book is a lot like that, actually. Um, yeah. And I think that's why the beginning takes so long is because you have this setup of this kid who is like, not only like, I mean, like in the movie, he's barely traumatized by all this because right. he's like, yeah, I got to, you know, do all this other stuff. But that also feels like the performance wise. I mean, yeah. it's like, right. You're saying they're the book and the he movie has, are like, laying PTSD out the emotional from track. Of, yeah. Right. Right, because there's that scene where Alyssa Janney's like, clearly you're like suffering post-traumatic stress. You saw a terrible thing. And he's like, I know, I just can't get over it. Yeah, there's no. <laughs> Dad, we have to go to this house. We have to. My life depends on it. Chris O'Dowd's also, the first introduction of him is he's watching TV and he like flips over to he's the He's watching a horribly violent nature documentary right. with birds right. tearing something apart. And right. then as his child leaves the room, right. he changes it to sports. Right. But, I the, but the motivation of his character is that he's like a bird watcher and right. he is really into birds. Right. Enough to go to Wales from Florida, like, which can't be like the easiest trip. He can write his book no, about birds. And right. you talk about how. And then they show up in Rupert Everett's like, I'm going to take a picture of a bird. And he's like, well, fuck it. I'm ruined. <laughs> His this, camera's bigger than mine. Right. <laughs> this whole trip was for naught. But you also go, if this movie is set in London, the idea of them going yeah. to the countryside is less insane and also the actors can use accents closer to their own. Yeah, but I think they're, they're very, they really want Sam Jackson to have that Florida line. Yes. I, I mean, I, I don't know what other reason there is, but they want him to be like, Florida, And Burton is, is probably keyed into the like, yeah, the oh, suburban sadness, nightmare. sunshine yeah. state kind of thing. But, um... I guess, yeah, because like Chris O'Dowd, it's like, okay, it, the best version of this character is Alan Arkin and Edward Scissorhands. It's like the oblivious dad who doesn't understand all the weird stuff and just has his own interests. Mm-hmm. But he's done in a way where you're like, is this guy like suicidally depressed? I have no beef with Chris O'Dowd. <laughs> I like him a lot. I enjoy him in things. I'm a big fan. But is Chris O'Dowd sometimes bad? Sometimes. Sometimes, maybe. Most people are sometimes bad. I, I think I'm he has me, a baby. Would you say he works a lot? Chris O'Dowd? Yeah. Would, yeah. You, would you call him a guy who maybe like pops up in a lot of movies and you're like, hey, it's Chris O'Dowd? I feel like he's a guy where uh, Bridesmaids was so huge mm. and there was maybe a clear track for what he could have done. Is he Irish in Bridesmaids? Yes. Yes. So that's one where they were maybe that was like they, maybe part he was of the even appeal. trying the accent and they were like, you know what? That is exactly what happened. Just do your thing. He says, I worked really hard my American accent, and they said, It's fine, do the thing that makes you the most comfortable and right. you can be the most funny and charming. And it's like, oh, he's charming. You're right. just an Irish cop. And he's so charming in that that I think people were like, Oh, is he gonna be like the lead of his own Apatow movie? Is sure. he gonna be the love interest in every romantic comedy? Is he this or that? And he's talked a lot about trying to like play against the expectations of the type of roles he that he was in line for. Right. And now he just does a lot of little stuff. A lot of little stuff. He's in like, Get Shorty. Get Shorty. Right, on, playing um, the Travolta equivalent. It's a Crackle original? Uh, yes, it's a, <laughs> no, no, it's Epics. Epics. I was oh. literally like, what is it? It's Epics. <laughs> it's Epics. It is indeed, uh, he is indeed the Travolta. He's the gangster right. who's trying to enter the film industry and Romano is the hackman. Right. Now, to be fair, Gene Hackman is incredible in Get Shorty because you're like, Gene Hackman plays the nebbishy producer yes. <laughs> and he totally nails it. Yeah. So I guess you could just sort of think like, well, who knows? Yeah, we'll cast against type I've or something. I've heard that show's fine. No, you haven't. Yes, I no have. No one's ever seen that show. I know one person who's seen that show. Is it Ray Romano? I said my friend's on it. <laughs> it's the character Bosch. 
Yes, Bosch. Bosch was- scene. Yeah, what if uh, these shows are only watched by fictional characters from other <laughs> shows that don't exist? Like the cast of Animal Kingdom can't wait to watch. And they have, you know, like, have it on in the background of the scenes. Give me another. Like- what, what was the show Nick Nolte was on? Graves? Graves. You have no <laughs> idea how hard I tried to get cast in Graves. I was well, like, this is the role. Yes, because yeah. I want, I was like, I could spend six months just following Nick six. Nolte around. It's probably three, it's right? Like 47 episode season. <laughs> that was Nolte's one demand. Yeah. I'll only do it. We're doing the 1090 model. <laughs> Anger management style I'm pre-packaged for syndication. <laughs> Uh, epics, twenty episodes. Twenty yeah. episodes they got. No, I, I wanted know. to do that show really bad. You wanted the Chris Lowell role? Well, no, I wanted the uh, what's his name? The Nick Nolte role? Uh, yes, <laughs> <laughs> Graves. I'm offer only for Graves. Graves? Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, who do uh, you want? Uh, Mr. Skylar Aston. Oh right, yeah, 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 Skylar. Aston. He plays the assistant. Yeah, you're kidding. No, <laughs> <laughs> I reviewed Graves. I think. Uh, so you watched Graves? I watched whatever they gave me. Uh, I think it was, you know, two to three episodes. Okay. Look, I wrote a whole review of this wow. show I don't remember. Wow. The easy political escapism of Graves. Wow, I'm nailing it. Because <laughs> he's like a Republican. That's the joke. Right. He's, the, he's like, the Republican Party is bad. I now realize this. Yeah. He's having like a late in life uh, sort of reawakening. Yes. It was about Trump. Before Trump, yeah. I guess. Well, it I came know. right as Trump was happening. Yeah. Uh, here's a, a really tough question. How do we talk about this movie? <laughs> All right, here we go. Um, Terrence Stamp. He's been telling these stories. He's okay? very peculiar. Then he dies. He gets ripped into a thousand pieces. His eyeballs get eaten. And, uh, yeah. It's, it's an ignominious don't end for Stampy. give a shit. Yeah, the police are like, I don't know. He lost animal. his eyes, whatever. Yeah, yeah. An- another Old people eye die. Lost. That's what they do. Sometimes their eyeballs fall clean out of their socket <laughs> with no blood. dogs are mad and they bite eyes out. Right. Yeah, right. That's what they're... Um, and so Jake. Jake. The Asa Butterfield character. Inconsolable. Yeah, deep sure. in therapy. He looks upset. Very upset. Decides to go to uh, the Welsh countryside with his dad. Because he studied all of his grandfather's papers and he Mm. keeps on referencing a home. Right. And also his uh, his grandpa says something like you have to find the loop. Or find, the to loop find the loop. Find the loop. Yeah, and the yeah, standing yeah. stones. In the book, it's a little bit different. Oh, I hate to be the in the book person, no, but like that's what, it is different. You know, you're bringing you're bringing <laughs> yeah. book expertise. Uh, it, he's his thing is like a lot more cryptic, which I thought was kind of funny in the movie and how he sort of like it makes a little bit more sense. Uh, sure. In sure. the book, it's like find the bird in the loop. Or like something, and, sure. you know, so from just a person who has no idea. Here he's right. basically like, so you're going to go to Cardiff and then you're going to get on the A395. Yeah. Like, 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 so here's like, a map 12. and I'm going to draw you right. Right. Even here. though I can't see anything. Loop. Here's a DVD of <laughs> Looper, the movie. <laughs> here's a jeweler's loop. Oh, boy. You look through it to find the loop. I mean, that's like another element of this movie that's like, oh, that's kind of fun in theory that it's like a Brigadoon world sure. that they're like stuck in a day mm-hmm. well that's the thing okay he gets on a boat he shouts at a pair <laughs> and then Dad, there's I'm a day joking, of antics <laughs> day of antics in wales with two welsh rappers a bunch of dead sheep yeah um a pub that where they're mean mm-hmm. i don't mean. know it's kind of gray and grim a and blind then, man tells him that all the kids died in the house in a bombing. Right, so he's night, like, no I survivor. guess no one was here i guess we should leave world war ii oh, this movie also invokes the nazis a lot in a weird way Sure. He's like, your grandfather was peculiar. Well, I think, the, the, I think the book is kind of <laughs> about know, that. Jewish. Where it's like, <laughs> <laughs> he was what the Polish considered peculiar. Yeah. You know, his, his <laughs> kind did have to live in a house, a weird house, you know, someone's basement. <laughs> <laughs> but no, isn't that, the book hits this harder, I think. But it the does. movie is it's, sort of there's like, a lot of Holocaust that's stuff. the explanation for why Terry Stamp is so weird, is that, right. well, he's a Holocaust survivor it's and coping mechanism. these tales of monsters and, right, <laughs> right, you know, it's really just, uh, you know. It's uh, an he allegory. was dealing with a certain kind of monster. Maybe to him they seemed like they mm. ate eyeballs. Um, so the... Uh, he gets taken through a portal in a cave, obviously. Right. By, he finds him immediately when he goes to the problem. loop. It, yeah. I mean, it could just as easily be a mistake that he stumbles upon them. And she's literally like, oh, yeah, Miss Peregrine heard you yelling at her. Uh, so here we go. And, and they're all surprised. They weren't looking for him. It's not like, finally, we've been waiting for you to show up. She's like, he must be dead. Because if he was alive, he would have warned me that you were coming. Exactly. Um, but we've heard she, so much about you. What he doesn't tell her 
which maybe he could have is uh, his eyes were eaten out of his skull. Any insight on that? Because that <laughs> remains the most mysterious aspect of the uh, death. What he does tell this her is pretty normal. I don't know. What he does tell her is, wow, this place is incredible. Yeah, what he does tell her is, like, do you guys have, like, a bathroom? I've never seen so many peculiar children. I can't believe it. (laughs) I've only seen, like, two or three at a time, not, like, 20. Yeah. You have two sack boys? (laughs) The sack twins. (laughs) Now, the sack twins are not in the book, correct? Uh, No, I don't think so. I think there are little twins, but I don't think they do what the sack boys do. I was looking... (laughs) It, does the book have photos in it? You it have does, book yeah. Here. Can I yeah. can I do a little leaf and the, the photos? The photos are the look, coolest part of the book. That right. thing. I know it was inspired by photos. Oh, but there are a lot of okay. It's fun. They break up the action, you know? Yeah. I mean I would have God, this so would have been my jam. I thought it looks the design cool. of yeah. some of the peculiar children was kind of interesting. I mean, the sure. fact that they're all just white yeah, people. There, are. Oh, there you are. So they're not really boring. characters, but the imagery. They have, like, some of the yeah. photos, I like, think. They don't oh, have like, anything stuff in to the them movie. other than their yeah. thing, yeah. it seems like. The well, who, dog body like, per- dog body. kid like, is. Like, <laughs> you see how someone brings in these photos and goes, but Tim Burton's doing it. Yeah. And you're like, sure, $100 million. But that's the thing where I'm like, in 2002, I'm like, sure, $100 million. In 2016, I'm like, is Tim thinking about doing anything else? But I guess we should acknowledge this is post Big Eyes. Mm-hmm. So maybe it's his classic thing of like, well, I tried to do something else and uh, they didn't like it. So I guess I'll do uh, Tim Burton bullshit. I'll do Tim Burton X-Men. Right. That's what it feels like. But who's your favorite look, Ben? You were saying you like the looks? Well, I just, I my favorite is the girl with the... Um, mouth behind yes, her head right. she's yeah. great that's i good. love her and i thought that was such a cool design but there's literally nothing to the character she like has nothing one, to do one uh, thought she I had, can eat a turkey leg well one thought i had is what if the mouth behind her is like another personality that's like like Ooh. a venom or something you know like <laughs> rah, rah, rah. like i would be funny that would be a sure. funny dynamic cute no. girl and like weird dark deep voice i think voice. the whole dynamic is just she doesn't want people to see her weird head mouth back yeah. mouth uh, yeah right I think it is called a back mouth in the book. There's like a term yeah, for I it. Oh my gosh, she's got a back there's, mouth. There's a this guy. Mm. Got a back mouth. Mm. He does. That's it's weird. it's just like such a brutal mix of like this film has no urgency and they hired an actor who is like, can we slow things down a little <laughs> bit? Uh who have we got? We've got come on, a big carrot girl. We have she can make things uh, plants big lung lady. Lungs uh, air, air air girl. She seems fire to be girl. constantly f- in a, like a like like she's just consciously floating up. Well, she's I don't she's understand. Like, the, it's weird like, that like she's like she I can control wear, air, but then helium, like if she doesn't wear the shoes, yeah. she'll float away forever. Yeah, right. Uh, that seems weird to me. She like, she's in the air. column of air at all. She has time. to wear yeah. the iron boots from Ocarina of Time. Okay. Um, then you, hey, ha- you hey, fire girl. That's a good pull. I agree. Thank, Thank you for that, David. Thank you, you you have the dream projector boy who, much like Ben, is into fashion. Um, another one where I'm like immaculate. Fashion. Well, he when when he's introduced, he also looks I'm like, like a little. Person, I'm like, stop, like yeah. stop, yeah. too many. Stop. No, I want to know more about this kid. Oh, what yeah. The fuck? <laughs> yeah. Well, because it's like there's mouth girl, and it's like what she. Well, she eats two turkey legs with her yeah. mouth. Okay. What what's this kid? Oh, he can see the future and project it. <laughs> I don't. Let's check in with him more often. For sure. You know, because Ava Green is like, it takes her a fucking week to be like, wait, you said some. His eyes were taken out? Oh, that's actually a thing with us. We, You should have, you know, maybe brought that up. <laughs> this movie feels like it's on Ambien, where it literally, like, the <laughs> movie itself has delayed reaction times. Where yes. it's like, wait, wait a second, wait a second. What was the thing you were saying about your dad? Because <laughs> Peregrine... <laughs> well, I remember, like, four scenes ago yeah, right, when we right. didn't follow up on that line of dialogue. Yeah, this movie, what was the... Because um, Peregrine's whole vibe uh, is like, it's chill here. Very chill. calm. To a fault. We have dinner, we go on a walk, <laughs> and then before the bomb drops on us, we all Put on our gas mask and turn back yeah, time. Look, now we're here's stuck some in a nightly <laughs> nightmare. Yeah, right. We, and, we're perpetually stuck in the rise of the Nazis exactly. and a bombing, but we don't worry. And about when some it. kids are like, "Hey, I'm stressed out. I'm right. eternally 13, and this is scary." <laughs> yeah, she's like, "You know, why are you talking so loud at dinner when we're trying to eat our big carrot?" <laughs> right. Somehow this house is like the goth Margaritaville, where everyone's like, "Just chill out, lay back, eat a turkey leg." We're in no rush. <laughs> oh, wait, you have to go catch a bird. Yeah. Go do that, and then you can come back and sit around, uh, I guess. Hey, mellow out, man. So uh, there's the twins. Is there anyone else that I'm forgetting? There's the plant girl from Sky High. There's the strong yeah. girl. She's small, but strong. She's oh, strong. yeah, she's strong. Bronwyn. She's um, a bigger character in the book, too. She does um, more stuff. Pixie then, Davis. Um, uh, whatchamacallit, there's a, a naked, invisible boy. 
oh, a yeah. really weird running gag, which is that he's constantly naked. <laughs> We're like, put on some fucking clothes. Well, my problem is <laughs> dick just rubbed up against me. My problem is not that he's naked. You're it's 12. When, he, when he sits on the couch, I'm like, put a towel down. Yeah, at least. something. Like, There's a part where he's like bouncing on yes. the couch. Like, that's a naked boy yeah. bouncing on a couch. That's weird. Um, but this is the thing. It's like the, the the movie occasionally will have a note like that where you're like, this is a little weird. Like this is a little R rated <laughs> right. for like the eyes, especially. Yeah. And you know, it, I don't know how many PG thirteen movies have people eating eyes. Not many. That would have scared the bitches. Yeah. Exactly. If I'm kid. eight years old and I'm seeing this, I'm like, excuse me no. to right. like a pile of eyes. That they're like, <laughs> <laughs> right. Like that. That feels like some like Return to Oz shit. <laughs> right. Right. There's something else too where I was like, how did they sneak this by? I can't remember what it is though. Well, we've got to keep talking. What the is the official guest? Well, they're yeah. fucked the up. slender man looking. Where, where Great. Rupert Green. Everett. Butterfield, O'Dowd, Janney, yep. Everett, yep. Uh-huh. Fifth Bill, yes, as the second alias of Samuel L. Jackson, right? Who has no proper name? No, doesn't do anything. I mean, no. whatever. Uh, Stamp, uh-huh. and then Purnell, uh huh. Then I think it's with Judy Dench and Samuel L. Jackson. Yeah. So there, nothing happens for a while. For a long while, there's the I guess there's the um revelation that there's a dead boy upstairs. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, well, there's the bird no who eyes. comes, and then they're like, "We should give the bird to Miss Peregrine," and then go because the right. scene's over. Right, he's like dad, <laughs> right? And she's sort of like feeding the bird sugar water or something. Yeah. I guess the idea is set. the dad loves birds so much that he's happy to stay here, and he believes that his son is just hanging out with other kids with his own Welsh age rappers. in the right time period and maybe yeah. killing sheep. So he keeps on like extending the trip, which is just like this feels like a big trip to like chunk out of their lives. He also know? though doesn't work and he's an alcoholic. Yeah, right. And the is movie doesn't put or... judgment on that he has no or will really to live. do anything about that. Right. They're just Kim kind Dickens of showing is the you. mom and Kim they Dickens, can very yeah. clearly say like right, Kim oh, I can't leave my job. Movie. Right. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. have to go take him. Just two three lines. If um, I, if I were Kim Dickens sending Chris O'Dowd and Asa Butterfield off to a Welsh countryside, I'd be like, you cannot murder suicide each other. Right. Because both of you seem to hate being alive. You have no will to live. Yeah, sort of like Wide Awake. Dennis Leary. He trudges around that movie like he's like, Basically, like, where did I put the gun that I was going to shoot myself with? Like, you know, he's like checking drawers. Like, is it here? I need to catch (laughs) Spider-Man. And then uh, eventually Mm -hmm. we get an explanation on what hollow ghasts are. Sure. And yeah. who killed Terrence Stamp. After Very she's late. like, we, I don't want to talk about it. Yeah, she's like, he's like asking a bunch of questions. She's like, mm, you've. The rules of my house are. My quota has boring. been filled. Exactly. For the day. Right. <laughs> she's a little too chill. <sighs> but she is kind of Professor Xy. Because yeah. Professor X is kind of like that too. He doesn't really he, say much. But he's he a real control a freak. Lot. Yeah. And then what are holocausts? Slenderman. <laughs> It's Slender Man with spike arms. I guess that is the best way to like, put it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's like the Cloverfield monster. I mean, they, they, yeah, right, they're like sort of mid sized Cloverfield monsters I mean, with a Burton wash. Peregrine, both In the book suits. and the movie, really is just like 1940s creepypasta. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's essentially point. how he wrote this book, where he was like, I'm going to find like a state Weird sale creepy creepypasta I wonder if, and then like, publish it. I wonder who was the person who was like, Hey, Tim, have you heard of the Slender Man, the new trend sweeping the teens of today? Right. I want to like, make, oh, like, man. a Slender Man romantic comedy. <laughs> no, but you go, like, not to, when like... When will Slender Man find his Slender Woman? Not to, to <laughs> overpraise the, Johnny Depp, Slender right? Man. But in the early stages... <laughs> Great of- Sartani <laughs> sentence. Okay, uh, everyone out. <laughs> <laughs> not to overpraise Johnny Depp. In the early part of his career, the reason why they worked so well together was that Johnny Depp was also so afraid of playing generic leading man roles uh-huh. so that he would sort of play against the hump yeah. of, uh, you know, especially something like Sleepy Hollow where you're like, okay. on paper, that character could be like really boring. And he comes up with his own like energy and characterization for it. Fair. And he, Tim Burton, in the early parts of his career, worked with so many like actors who came out of like sketch comedy and things like that, you know, okay. where it's like he wanted people who could make like creative acting choices, like unexpected acting choices. Comedic yeah. actors, even for dramatic parts. And then in this, you're just like, why isn't anyone trying to be funny? Why isn't anyone trying to shade anything? Put any dimensionality into it, you know? I don't know. Because Tim Burton's not a very connected director anymore, and he wasn't engaged with this project. Wow. Yeah. 
I mean, sorry, but is this like, just a paycheck project? Maybe. I mean, the buck stops there, right? It's like sort of like, what are you doing, he bro? Has so much money. That's just like, I just feel like maybe he's just like, I don't know. I want to get out of the house for a couple of days. <laughs> it feels that way. <laughs> right? He shot in yeah. London, where he lives or lived. Um, right, and uh, I mean, you know, if uh, you believe the reports around this time, he's dating Eva Green. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. He Dark and Helen Shadows Bar- is Carter the, uh, have split up. Dark and... Shadows is the baton pass. Right, right is the uh, the rumor. <laughs> yeah, Eva. Jeez, you're 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 sort of like, what are you doing, Eva? Yeah, I mean, Tim Burton. I don't know. Maybe he draws you a hollow gas. Like, <laughs> will you be my Valentine? I don't know. Little hard eyes. The hollow gas looks like some Tim Burton concept art. Yeah. that he had in his notebook. Right. right. Sam Jackson certainly looks like Tim Burton concept art. <laughs> it, I hate the concept of the hollow gas because the concept is that they are peculiars. They're peculiars. But Sam Jackson wanted to do an experiment. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What was the experiment? To live a long time. I guess. Yeah. But, and then it's like, it was one of those experiments where it's like, this is either going to make us live a long time or, or we're going to turn into 15 foot tall slender man with spiky teeth. And look, you go risk versus <laughs> right. reward. Mm-hmm. And that's what happened. Yeah. Isn't, it, then, isn't it better to know yeah, than to yeah, spend I mean, your whole life wondering? wondering. Right. Then Miss Peregrine's like, but of course then he figured out if you eat eyes, you turn back into a person except you have like white eyes. Yeah. What kind of trial and error process were the <laughs> monsters going through here where they were like, is it the spleen? Which part? Nope. Oh, another one. All right. Ding dong. Answer the door. Ding dong. Ding dong. Ding dong. Wow, this guy's over here. Let me walk over there. Hello. 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 Everybody, what a pleasure it is to be here. Hello. I'm Brooklyn Manuel Miranda. <sighs> sheets is sheets is sheets is sheets. <laughs> you got any more? Yeah. And I'm not throwing away my sheets. No, I am not throwing away my sheets. They're the five-star hotel sheets. It shouldn't be difficult and expensive to get sheets like this at home. Okay, you kind of ramped up at the end there. I used to buy sheets and then Mm -hmm. throw them out after one use. It was expensive (laughs) and bad for the environment, so I bought Brooklinen. And they're buttery, which I know sounds gross, but when you feel it, feels really good on your body. They're real buttery. I'm not throwing away my sheets, and I'm uh, not throwing away my sheets. Are you any relation to the Lin Manuel Miranda from Manhattan? The guy from Inwood? Who? He he wrote like uh, uh, Hamilton and In the Heights. No, never okay. heard. Of so you're Brooklyn Manuel, Manuel Miranda. Miranda. Okay, and I, uh, I I'm sort of unique. I, I would describe <laughs> oh, myself. Your voice is back. <laughs> yeah, I would describe myself. Uh, you know, kind of as a uh, you know uh, one of a kind in the world of performance. Uh, right, that's not what he liked. I'm sort of a, a, a hip hop musical theater guy. Never heard of such a thing. Yeah. What a crazy concept. Would you agree that you spend one third of your life in sheets? I would. And it's time for a betting upgrade? Most definitely. Okay, well, we both, Griffin too, we've all got Brooklynans. Most definitely. We I, love I've them. never thrown them out. They're five-star hotel sheets. If throwing them out, by the way, Brooklyn, uh, weird move, but definitely these are not throw-outable. Yeah. Um, Wake less, sleep more. Buy your sheets from Brooklinen's online store. You have store. so many bits. Me? Yeah. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't even like the limelight. I uh, never want to perform. Consider the coconut. Uh, so, um, make way. Brooklinen was founded in early 14. Make way. Make way. By a husband and wife. This bedding is all brand new. <laughs> Vicky and Rich fool up. Uh, they wanted to make five star hotel quality sheets more affordable and easier to order. Uh, they're the first DTC bedding company. They work directly with manufacturers and directly with customers. No middlemen. Consider the pillowcase. They're in the consider br- they're, the sheets. Uh, Brooklyn's the I fast. I want to be in the bed with Brooklyn's. The bed with Brooklyn's. <laughs> I am getting sweaty. Really? I I'm am not. somehow getting sweaty. I'm not. I do this for fun. Uh, Brooklyn is the fastest growing bedding brand in the world. They've got 35,000 five stars reviewed. The sheets don't feel great. They look great too. Don't just feel great. They do feel great. It was a double negative. Uh, you can mix and match 25 colors and patterns to make your bedroom just right. How you doing, Brooklyn? You were looking at your phone. <laughs> <I was> just... <laughs> Anything on there? <laughs> 
<laughs> maybe thinking inspiration was going to hit if I looked at my phone for a second. Uh, well, I'm my... struggling to figure out. Yeah, what I, else I think to you do did here. okay. I think you did okay. I mean, I wrote like five original songs in this room right now. You did. It was very original. Uh, my Brooklyn Sheets are the best. Hip hop most... on Broadway. No one's ever done it. No one's ever done it. Uh, bring in the noise. Bring in the sheets. What's that? Okay. Uh, my Brooklyn sheets are the best, most comfortable sheets I've ever slept on. And now it's time for your upgrade. So Brooklyn.com is giving an exclusive offer for just our listeners. You can get 10% off your first order and free shipping when you use the promo code check at Brooklyn.com. Well, and that's not the only way that you save money. How else? You don't buy garbage bags. <laughs> to throw them out? Because I am not throwing away my sheets. No, I am not He's back to this one. my sheets. <laughs> Uh, so the only way to get 10% off your first order and free shipping is to use the promo code check at brooklinen.com. That's B-R-O-O-K-L-I-N-E-N.com. Promo code check. And they're so confident in their product that all their sheets, comforters, and towels come from come with a lifetime warranty. I cannot remember what the songs from Mary Poppins Return sound like. Nobody can. Wow, that guy had a lot of energy. <laughs> I'm really, I'm tired. Me too. <laughs> He wore me At up. first it was really exciting, and now it feels a little oppressive. It feels like, dial it down for a second. And I know the intent is totally. I love him. I love him, but whew. Just maybe, like, go on a vacation. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Brooklyn, they're the best sheets ever. How many people were involved in the experiments? How many holocausts are there? It's, I just don't like a world that doesn't make sense. You know I like rules. You love mm. rules. And these are bad rules. Yeah. I don't fucking get it. And if you were like, well, the movie's not that concerned with rules, but it's such a thrill ride. It's a tight 90 minutes, sure. <laughs> full of visual inventiveness, a fun comic energy. You'd be like, fine, it is what it is. It is not what it is. No. It's Two boring. hours and seven minutes. Yeah. yeah. It feels like five hours. It feels longer. Yes. Yeah, it, when I it saw it, it feels the like Berlin like... Alexander Platt. <laughs> pa- pa- Peregrine Alex. Peregrine Alexander Yeah. Um, when you saw the running time, I was like, oh, it's only 127 minutes. I thought it was like a hundred and yeah, two yeah. hours and a half. Or 127 something. hours. Like I remember it just <laughs> bragging. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I did watch it when I was wedged in a boulder. So maybe <laughs> that was part of <laughs> Which might have, yeah. No one would enjoy a movie in that situation. No. Um, so uh he gets found out. Yeah. He basically brings Everett, Everett's been sort of tailing him. They right. bring he brings the bad guys back to right. the house. But I mean it's sort of not his fault because he would he had been masquerading as Alice and Janney. But it's also one of these movies where you go, like, why is any of this happening now? Right. Mm-hmm. Like they have been so comfortably like living in this loop for decades. And of course, like every once in a while, someone loses a couple eyes. <laughs> Right. But like this movie like doesn't go like this is the final showdown. Like it has come to a head. You've arrived just in time. The war is about to begin. No. It's like if you want to stick around, then maybe you'll be able to help us fight some of these things off. Sometimes they come. Samuel Jackson entering, it literally is sort of like an annoying house guest. Is right. Because mm-hmm. Eva Green's sort of like, I see. Yeah. <laughs> she keeps like talking sure. over him and his expression is so strange. Yeah. I couldn't figure out like he what seems... he was feeling. Yeah. <laughs> well. He has these white eyes, too, which are kind of throwing you off. <laughs> I think he so looks good. good. I think he looks pretty good. I think Sam is fun. He's and fun he's delivering like the lines. Sharp with some, yeah, his he's teeth. got a sharp teeth. His blade hands. Um, his but, hands. But he's sort of doing this thing where he's, like, really hung up on how, like, look, I was going to get Terrence Stamp's address. Yeah. This, this address out of him the old-fashioned way, but my colleague ate him. And you're like, who cares? And he's like, I just want to be clear. I'm more of a finesse guy, and then I have <laughs> this monster around right. that eats people. He's doing the and good then cop. He got it again in a second scene. He's doing the good cop, eye eating cop routine. Yeah, exactly. Where it's Look, like, I like to just sit down, <laughs> cup of coffee, talk. My partner here, he might eat your eyeballs. <laughs> and I'm, I'm going to eat your eyeballs, but later? Yeah. Like, I, I don't. And then he keeps going. I'll wine like, and dine you before I eat your eyeballs. He keeps going, like, children, get over here. And Eva Green's like, absolutely not. You'll never speak to my children that way. Children get over here. <laughs> That's like a whole extended bit. Yeah. Asa Butterfield's just sort of standing there. He's standing. But you hear all these stories. I mean, I don't want to just like keep on harping on it, but it, it does come down to this thing of just like, you know, different directors, I feel like it's always interesting when like people ask the dumb sort of like mirror Rorschach test question directors where it's like, what do you think is most important that a director does? Yeah. Because some directors will be like, it's all about performance. Mm. Some directors will be like, I hire actors to do what they want to do. 
I'm about creating the environment and the world or whatever, you right, know? Right. Like the Coen brothers always say, like, it's just tone management. Directing is making sure everything is syncing up on tone. But a lot of it, I think, is truly just energy. Mm -hmm. Like, you feel the energy of the filmmaker and the energy they're putting into the film when they're working on it right. and when you edit it together. And you hear all these stories where, like, directors say, like, the first time you watch your first assembly cut of any movie, you think you're a fraud, it's a disaster, <laughs> and you want to retire. Right. Because it's, like, filled with all this dead space or right. all these scenes you don't need. It's shapeless. It doesn't have any sort of, like, pepper rhythm to it. Sure. And this movie feels like he watched the first cut and he was like, yeah, so we can print this. Slap a this. score on it. <laughs> right. We're done. <laughs> and even, like, Elfman's kind of, like, apathetic to it. It's not Elfman. It's not? Who no. is it? Who is it? Mike Higgum and Matthew oh, Margison. Weird. Right. Oh, wow. right. This they is are, they're Zimmer acolytes. From Cairnholm themselves. <laughs> yeah. So they're only... <laughs> yeah, right. They're, they're only, two peculiar children, actually. <laughs> they're, they're the twins. They're only two birds They open their mouths and the movie Elf, score comes Elfman out. Elfman scores. Which it's uh, Ed Wood, because they got right, in a fight in after a fight. Nightman. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. He wanted to play Jack Skellington, and they only let him do the songs, and Chris Sarandon, of course... Uh, was Oscar nominated for his turn best actor as Jack Skellington. Uh -huh. So then they get in a fight and Howard Shore does the Ed Wood score, which is great. Why doesn't Elfman do this movie? I mean, this I mean, speaks to like... Maybe he was like, busy with like more important shit. Like he's doing else? the Dumbo score. It's not doing? like they're in right. a fight now. Like, But also when you read interviews with the two of them, I think we all like, we all, like the Burton heads, like you me. and a few other people, right? right. Yes. Want to believe that like these guys were like best buddies? No. And apparently they're like, yeah, you know, well, like I think uh, when he has a new film, he calls me and I come in and I do what I can. Well, but that's the other thing about Burton is he's kind of like get everyone that I usually work with, right, Colleen? I mean, Bruno Delbanel shot this. He's a great cinematographer, uh -huh. and I don't know how many times he has worked with Burton. Now, before. like six or seven. I mean, is, he, is he starts many? with Big, big Foot Fish. Big Foot. Why couldn't I say that? He didn't shoot Big Fish. He didn't? No. Who shoots Big Fish? I don't know. A fish or something? I think it's Bernard Devin. I don't think so. I'm going to look it up. Okay. Look it up, Davey. Look it up, Davey. Uh, Philippe Rousselot, another oh. Frenchman. Okay. That's why I was getting confused. Um, no, he shot um, right, cause Bruno Dark Dubonel. Shadows. Yeah. And then Big Eyes. And then this. Okay. He didn't shoot Dumbo, though. So it was a three film collaboration. Rousselot shot. The the couple before that. He's into sure. like his French uh sure. uh sort of uh Jeune type. Well that's the thing is like right. Delbanel shot Emily. Um, I'm right. sure Burton was like, I like that. Yeah. Uh who's shooting Ben Davis is shooting Dumbo. Wait, why the fuck didn't the Elfman do this movie? Was I don't it just know. He I might mean, have been busy. He, quote, he did a Age of Ultron like Mighty you know. Wind due to complete lack of interest. Um I'm trying to find out. Composer Around this time, he got he works a lot. Are you talking to Elfman? Elfman, fuck. He was doing a uh, the blacklist score for one episode. That's why he couldn't do <laughs> his Peregrine. So peculiar job. He did Age of Ultron the year before. He did four scores. Okay, end of the tour. Four scores. When was this? Seven years ago. Mm -hmm. Woo! That was good. I thought the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> Are go. you going to give him a good card? Is there give some kind of... Card. Oh, yeah. Uh, let me see if I can find one of these. Yeah, here we go. Here's a good card. This is just a Valentine's Day card. <laughs> <laughs> Will you um, be mine? Gladly. Great. Thank you for uh, asking. Of course, yeah. I need one. A few days later, like a week late, but whatever. Yeah. Um, I don't know. No, it's cool. It's fine. He did the end of the tour, Fifty Shades of Grey, Avengers Age of Ultron, and Goosebumps. I mean, four classics. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then in 2016, he did Before I Wake, Alice Through the Looking Glass. So he's busy with the non-Burton right. Alice and Girl on the Train. Shrug. Maybe just apathy. I don't know. <laughs> sure. Hey, Recent, what if a girl uh, I mean, was um, on a train? What, what if there was a wife? What mm. if there was a... <laughs> Could you put in a walnut crack? <laughs> Oh, <laughs> I came up with this on the Reddit, but I want to announce it here. Did you see this? Go ahead. Someone was asking if Jonathan Price's walnut is a blender. No, you're right. And it's not. It's, it's the, the opposite. opposite. It's what you think is a blender, but then it, it's actually crucial. You're like, this right? is a plot detail? <laughs> yeah, right. The walnuts matter? Right. So the piss jar in BVS is a walnut. That's a walnut. The right. walnut and the wife is a walnut. At first, it seems like a pointless character quirk, and then it ends up being an important, quote unquote, part of the story. Sure. But it's maddening. Emma Stefanski. Yes. It's time for you to weigh in. The wife. <laughs> I a watched pro it. Or con. Do you do you take get in the ring? Get in the ring, Stefanski. Uh, I'm never getting married. 
Because of the wife. Because of the wife. You don't want to end up like that. I don't want to be that. I mean, it is true that all wives are like that. What all wives wife? write books for their husbands so it, that their husbands can put their name on it. It's, I mean, honestly, it's that's a barbaric tradition. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> it is. Western society is really broken. <laughs> yes, truly. Uh, yeah, that God. movie's bad. Yeah, it's really Chapo. bad. That was funny. I'll what? talk wife with Chapo. <laughs> yeah, right. I'll yeah. do it. <laughs> wife, wife episode. Wives only. <laughs> um... So the wife. No, I just remember you were watching it recently. And I watched me, it's it. It's a piece of shit. It's boring. Uh, I was talking to Fred better Hoffner or worse than Peregrine. It. Um, better than Peregrine because the wife that. is short. The wife is like is the wife short? Ninety minutes, something like that. 90, well, I mean, what like five one, five two? How how tall is Glenn? <laughs> the wife is an hour and forty one minutes, and Glenn Close five, two. is <laughs> a sturdy five five. Whoa. A tall wow. lady. How tall is Ava Green, the most beautiful woman I've ever seen in person? Uh, she is 5'6", so she's got an inch on her. <laughs> I remember meeting a kid at a, at a high school party who told me that Ava Green was his babysitter growing up, and it Whoa. actually made me angry. Was it a French kid? <laughs> no, he was like, my mom is like French, and she was like living in New York for right, a little while, right, right, right. and so he was like, oh, you can like live with us and be a babysitter? Like, Hello. Yeah, I can't do her. She has a very specific American accent, like you know. Well, she English does speaking. the sort of right British. Yeah, kind she's of affected, got that sort of right. James Bond. I can't do it. Yes. James Bond. Welcome um, home. You got to put some fry in that. Peculiar children. Vespa. 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 Um, I love Ava Green. She. I covered. Yeah, I remember the the Golden Compass red uh red carpet. The mm-hmm. Golden Compass red carpet. The Golden yeah. Carpet. Uh, mm-hmm. I was, she was just one of those people where I was like, my God, like she <laughs> looks like that in real life. Like, I can't believe it. Your eyes kind of, it's just like so striking. Is she your number one? Like that celebrity really is stunning in person. 100%. Who, who would yours be? You know who my be? number two is? You have someone where you're like, wow, they, who? Colin Firth. <laughs> where I was like, Jesus, this guy's like more charming in person. Yeah. Like, I can't believe it. I'm getting lost in him. There's that thing where you meet certain yes. celebrities or you see them in person and between their like charisma and their looks, you're like, you actually don't even come across that well on screen. <laughs> right. You're, you're like, losing something you're in translation. Up. Right. Clooney is someone like that. When I, like, he is like a movie star. You know who's weirdly that for me? Who? James McAvoy. Oh, I was in an elevator with James McAvoy charmer. once, and I was like, wait a second, this is the most charming guy I've ever seen. <laughs> he was like, oh, I don't know. The guy was popping so hard, back. and all he was doing was hitting a button in the elevator. I was just in wanted. <laughs> right. And so he's one of those guys where you're like, oh, you're like kind of like really hot, actually. Like your eyes are stunning infinity pools. Nah, get, nah, get out of here. Yeah. What are you about? Do you have an answer? I don't think I've ever talked. To like a hot person before. I don't. Oh, oh well. come, come on. Three hotties in this <laughs> what room. What are you talking about? Three Hello? The classic hunks. I meant Three like, the classics. Like a, so oh, like like a super, super actor slow. I mean, let's see. Well, I do have the one interaction I've had with Kit Harrington where he walked into a hotel during TIFF and there was a, like a standee poster of him. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. And he pointed to it and looked at me and was like, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> and then he left the room. Which is what I would do. That? Rules. It was really sweet, yeah. I was like, oh, you're so cool. Uh, he's very tiny, right? He's pretty he's short, He's a little yeah. boy. Because you're a tall person. I am. I'm taller I'm than him, person. for sure. I've heard he's smaller than me. Really? Yeah. He looks like a tall guy. He's I think because he's like proportioned. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Right. Rachel McAdams I had that with. Uh-huh. Where I was just like, oh, you, you photograph poorly. <laughs> like I think you're a beautiful person. Did when you I yell see at her you like, movies. "Why are you so unattractive in movies?" <laughs> yeah. Do you know how gorgeous you are? I was. Just, I just called up every cinematographer who had ever worked with her, and I was like, "What are you doing wrong?" I've just had a lot of interactions with actors where I'm like, "Oh yeah, in person you look like a little bird. Like you look like right. this sort of like mm. very fragile, small thing." Right. And you're like, and they're they are all really small. Yeah. They're small. They're small people. Right. When I meet a tall celeb, I'm like, Jesus Christ. You're really tall. Yeah, I mean, you're taller. The two of you are taller than, like, everyone in Hollywood. <laughs> Who's tall? Liam Neeson. The Scars Guards are tall. The Scars Guards are tall. Schwarzenegger's tall. Sigourney is tall. Yeah. Um, Sigourney's, like, 6'1", right? I don't know. Jesus. I think are we just doing, like, hike cast Wendell and Christie's yeah, tall. I don't know what. You want to keep talking about Miss Peregrine? <laughs> they go to Blackpool. There's some sort of a fight. Yeah, yeah, I think EDM that part's circus. <laughs> That part was fun. <laughs> Vince Vaughn, 6'5". Oh. Vince Vaughn's big. He's very and you know big, yeah. You know what Vaughn is un, uh, pretty good in this year? Uh, fighting with my family? Fighting with my family. Mm. My, playing it very low key, like not doing the Vince Vaughn stuff. I feel like True Detective somehow like sapped him of like old Mellowed school Vince yeah. Vaughn. Yeah, it's like gone. I kind of like this new phase of like between that and like Hacksaw Ridge of Vince Vaughn being like, I'm just going to be the pill. 
Yeah, right. <laughs> like, I'm going to be the sort of, like, verbal antagonist for these characters rather than doing, like, the cool guy Rat Pack thing. Uh-huh. Uh, my dad my dad and Bromley saw fighting uh, with my family because my dad loves wrestling. Sure. And, uh, that sounds good. Uh, they were like, this looks like a nice father-daughter movie, which they never do that anymore. That's nice. And Aww. they both came out and they were like, yeah, the movie's a mess. Vince Vaughn's really good in it. <laughs> yeah, the movie is unfortunately not that good. Um, it has Florence Pugh and she's so fucking great. That was the other thing. And right. it just keeps like kind of like being like, but let's check in with this other stuff. And I'm like, not interested. Where's Florence? <laughs> yeah. Bring it back, please. Like, Excuse when they're like, me. what about her brother, though? He really suffered because he didn't become a wrestler. I'm like, I came here for the movie about the person who became a wrestler. So, uh, end of line for you, kid. End uh, of line. Yeah, that's a good scene. Yeah, looks good. Oh, my God. It's also just like an ad for WWE, though. That's the other problem. The whole movie. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Even though it was written and directed by Stephen Merchant. Like, so it's like, weird. yeah, very strange. Okay, so Miss Peregrine turns to a bird, goes in the cage, and she goes off. And right. the kids decide they're going to save her. But first, they have to deal with one of those fucking monsters. They kill the monster. He's really By bad shooting with it the, in the head with a really crossbow. Bad with the crossbow. The, it the takes him like four. The house. Yeah, it takes like four or five times. <laughs> it's whatever. Such the a house bad blows ability. up. The I loop closes. Right. Uh, they go into the sunken ocean liner. The girl summons it out of the ocean. Yeah. I'm they trying to just get us through voyage. this. Has Judy Dench still not come in at this point? Oh, right. She's she came there. in and then she dies pretty quickly. Almost immediately. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, she gets yanked out the window. Right. It's, it's <laughs> almost like if that was done as like a comedic thing. I mean, it's not funny, but it's yeah. just like there's nothing to it. She's like, she's like, kids, lock up. Lock the doors, the windows. Okay, we're safe. Right. Uh, and then she just gets pulled out. <laughs> yes. So dumb. Yeah. Uh, okay. They go to the fucking Circus. pier. Yeah. And then we have that fun little moment of them fighting and actually doing fun. something in this universe that's kind of interesting uh, yeah. somewhat. Yeah. You well, know what it reminded me of was uh, I like came of age when like the Spiderwick Chronicles were super, mm -hmm. super big. Yeah. Sure. Um, and Nickelodeon made the movie yes. of them. And they basically yeah. just like mashed all the books together. Mm -hmm. uh, Which is a... Not a good approach. Bad, no, bad no. idea. Yeah. And the movie yeah. sucks. That's what they always used to do, though. They'd be like, well, we don't know if we're going to make a franchise. Right. We don't like franchises. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's put all the books into right. one movie. Uh, right. And then right. the end of the book is just, or the end of the movie is just like them, the kids are like, the monster's like allergic to tomatoes or something. I vividly remember they put a bunch of tomatoes in a blender and like use it as a weapon. <laughs> Jeez. Um, Which does not happen the, in the, the books. The, um, what's and it called? I was very We were just talking about it. The Lemony Snicket. Uh, yeah, that, that's the first three, three in I one. Think. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Which is why that movie is sort of episodic and. Yeah, I still kind of like that movie, but it doesn't have an ending. It looks okay. I don't. Like it looks movie. amazing. Yeah. Give it some Who directed credit. It? Uh, Brad Silberling. Well, that seems like an issue. <laughs> Director of the incredible. So a bunch Casper. of people in 2016 <laughs> see bones, wet yeah. bones, come to life. Did he put a heart into the bones? I don't know. Yeah, it they have matter. like entrails. You see it in one like little second. I literally feel like I'm falling asleep. <laughs> just trying. I'm well, like, also, it sounds like you were an insomniac who tried to watch Miss Peregrine last night. I was, but I'm also like it on my birthday, nonetheless. <laughs> but uh, after no less. watching Alita, yes, right, yeah, in right. 4DX. Like I got Hello. like Alita to my corner. I was like, and this you watched movie. Alita in 4DX at like 10:45 p.m. Correct. or whatever. I saw right. a late night. <laughs> Happy birthday, Lita, to me. <laughs> yes. I was fair. raging in 4DX, and I'm like, oh, okay, let me just go home, go to sleep, watch Peregrine in the morning. Right. Couldn't fall asleep. I was like, well, this thing will definitely put me to sleep. Right. And instead, it felt like Chinese water torture. <laughs> <laughs> We're like, I'm tired. And then, but then, like, it's like, Ugh. not right. But then right. here I am in my head trying to remember the plot of the film and just trying to play it back in my mind is almost putting me to sleep. I literally right. could fall asleep on this table right now. Right. For a super long movie, not really that much happens. Very little. I feel like our plot recap has not been. That's why I truly that think long. you could do a 95 minute version of this movie that wouldn't feel chopped down. It, also, yeah. it wouldn't feel like Jonah Hex. Our recap. No. <laughs> it would feel like this is the natural length of this film. We cut out the five minutes of pausing in between each movement. In between each line yeah. written Let me by just take a breath. Butterfield. Right. <laughs> um, Dad, yeah, the, listen. The Blackpool thing, which like Blackpool is like. Not that dynamic location. It's like England's Jersey Shore. It's right. like it's a boardwalk. Like that's what I kind of like about. Sure, I mean it's fine. Yeah. Um, what do they do instead of fist bump? People at the Jersey Shore fist bump. They do, dude. All right, you don't know about the Jersey Shore. <laughs> GTL. 
Yeah. Jim uh, T. Laundry. There you go. <laughs> That's how it works in Blackpool. Jim T. Laundry. Jim at Blackpool, oh, you just was, I was doing, I was doing as you. if oh, I was doing a mapping it. game. Thank you. Thank you. David, thank you. Thanks, David. Thank you. David, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Sure. Thank you David. No, and uh, hold on. Thank you. Actually, we missed a really important detail. How do you know so much about this? What is it? Blackwater? God, that speaks oh, to how Blackpool. boring this movie is that we've been <laughs> talking about. <laughs> the English countryside for an hour and a half, and we didn't even have the end energy to set that up we've said london multiple times so many times london i'm from london i've, lo- oh, I've lost I the will there. to bit this movie has made me lost the <laughs> will to goof but so you're excited <laughs> to do alice in wonderland tomorrow yeah because alice in wonderland at least is like mad in it it's like a alice travesty wonderland is crazy. Right. whereas this is like a gentleman's four right right like that's what this is right wait a second david yeah i'm sorry and stefanski sorry to interrupt the conversation interrupt here. it I just noticed something a little worrisome. Okay. Look what I'm holding in my hand right here. What do you what do you got there? I can't see it. It's a Coming leash. Focus. It's a leash. And you're off it right I now. I am off the leash. Often. I'm off to off. I mean you're David the Dog Sims. True. Arf arf. And some have occasionally suggested that you might even be a dogman. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. That and rings a bell. Now that you're off the leash, I don't know what you're going to say. Well, you could endorse anything, you dog man. Well, I think I'm going to endorse uh, this new film in cinemas. Motion picture houses? From Cinema Made in Italy and Magnolia Pictures, we got Dog Man, the new film from the award-winning director of Gamora. Mm. Wait it, a second. Is it, it going to be on silver screens? Uh, yeah, it won the Best Actor Award at the 2018 Cannes Film Festival, hey, which that's a year was I at. Well, well, hey, congratulations. Uh, and the European Film Awards. Oh, wow. Tells the story of vengeance, where only the strong will survive. Mm. Marcello is a slight, mild-mannered man, dividing his days between working at a modest dog grooming salon. Sounds kind of like me. And being coerced into the petty criminal schemes of the local bully, Simoncin- Simoncino. I yep. love petty crime. It doesn't sound It's like a lot of petty anymore. crime. Yeah. Uh, he's an ex-boxer. He terrorizes the neighborhood. And his abuse finally brings Marcello to a breaking point, And he decides to stand up for his own dignity through an act of vengeance with unintended consequences that might involve a dog man. I'm not sure. So this is a fun one. Bring the whole family. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, it's an official selection at Cannes, Telluride, Toronto Film Festivals. It won nine David Donatello Awards, which is like the Italian That's Oscars. Yeah. Uh, best Picture, Director, Screenplay, Actor. Uh, and The Guardian called it a movie with incomparable bite mm, and strength. I see what you did there. I can't believe a movie's advertising on Blank Check. They should do this all the time. I know. They should do this all the time. Disney at us. Uh, so Dogman is now playing in New York and Los Angeles. Mm. It's coming to additional select cities on April 26th. If you like Gamora. Yeah, good movie. From the same director. Yeah. People got into the Gamora TV show, maybe came around to the movie late. You got a new one. And here's the thing that we love above all else on this show movies and going to see them going to see them the theater going experience i do love it go More to a picture anything. house ask see for dogman one of, one of them silver screens and tell them to throw dogman up there and i yeah. gotta tell you i love this because i love signs that say if someone's a dog or mm. not mm. and this this movie's got a movie poster. Yes, that makes that very clear. And I heard, you know what you could do, Ben? You could mm. go see Dogman at your local art house theater. Great, and wear a sign around your neck that says "You are seeing Dogman." Right, I so you don't forget. Love that. It ends with, I don't fucking know. They pelt they, they, the they, beasts they, they kill with the snow. Ghasts. They go down he into talks the... to his grandpa at some point. Well, no, his grandpa's like, bad. Once he ki- once they kill all the guys, <laughs> his grandpa's alive because the guys weren't there to kill his grandpa. Which like, doesn't it's a make sense the loop. because Baron, what's his name is Baron. He's there in their time now after having been. It's true. In Florida. It doesn't so that make sense. Does it wouldn't have impacted it doesn't make, the, the timeline time loop stuff? Makes no sense. All. No. Um, it's because stupid. also once the time loop closes, shouldn't they all just like grow a thousand years? I know the it lasts like they the have movie like a few is hours. Like, of right, <laughs> you can kind of like grace period exactly, which is a bunch of bullshit. And then he goes and talks to his grandpa, his and wife. rather than being like, "I fucking." 
brought you back to life. This yeah. is huge. I love you. Mm-hmm. Terrence Stamp's kind of like, go get her. Yeah, maybe you should leave and uh, go find Ghost Girl. I mean, that, Air Girl. You know, There's like no a montage. Rush, of course. He goes to Japan and has like slicked back hair. Yeah, that's the thing. When then he shows up and he's like, you won't believe the journey I had. I went from loop to loop. And I'm like, are the loops portals now? Like, what <laughs> would someone explain this to me? But this also gets to this thing where like you see these late Burton movies and you're like, is the problem that now he's happy and he feels more content and so he can sure. no longer make stories about outsiders with his heart in it or is tim burton more depressed than he's ever been <laughs> seems he seems down yeah yeah um i feel like only a depressed person could make a movie like this. yes i mean this film does kind of like next to melancholia it's the second best representation of like physical depression i've ever seen <laughs> yeah um just by mistake like full body in right. a, a director <laughs> yeah right um i've been watching um empire games on netflix which is like about ancient civilizations okay and i just watched one about uh the first emperor of china oh cool and so they talked about the, the previous dynasties mm-hmm. and how they would burn all of the paper all of the writings all yeah. of the culture like try to tamp that down because right. they're the new right we should burn this movie. Yeah. Every print, everything that exists yeah. should just not exist. Yeah. I mean, we should get rid of this. Movie Society already, started its said. downward trend when this movie hit theaters. I don't know if it's that bad, but I just think <laughs> that people across the, the world burn, burn this to the ground. Maybe we need to go to the Welsh countryside, mm. find the house. Great. Nice go enough. back in time. Right. Kill Ransom Riggs. Right. <laughs> Exactly. Stop the loop. <laughs> and then we get to return back to our present day with this movie never having been made. I don't think that's going to like, what if we did that and then Trump loses? <laughs> like, where we're like, that was it? That was the one thing? <laughs> this movie does come out like a month before he gets elected. What? That's no, it correct. comes out in September. Yes, that means you're queuing up my, me for the box office game. <laughs> yeah. September 30th, 2016. Right, so Everyone's movie, favorite weekend. This movie literally comes out five weeks before Trump is elected. Sure. It also comes out. Uh, number one in the box office with $28 million on its way to 87 domestic. Even like kind of an apathetic box office yeah, result. So like, I don't know. People went, I guess. Right. If it like <laughs> opened to six, you'd be like, wow, that's a flop. And if it opened yeah. to 50, you'd be like, if that overperformed in 28, right. you're like, okay. So it made uh, 87 domestic, but 296 worldwide. His brand is so strong. So, you know, it probably, you know, no one was probably that. Sweating it too much, like it no. probably broke even. I guess. Yes, yeah, made no sequel. Certainly no sequel. Yeah. yeah. Um. Number one, number two is also a new movie. Number two is also a new movie. Oh, I believe I know what this is. What is it? Deepwater Horizon. There you go. Didn't even thought, need another clue. People thought they would <laughs> overperform. People, people thought Deepwater Horizon would outgross Peregrine. Is that that oil boy movie? I would have thought that. Yes, and then people oh. were kind of surprised by how little Deepwater made. These are some oily boys. It's true. Deep part, you know, the problem was that people are not like, like, you know, like Patriots Day or whatever. It's like, yeah. I get it. He's a cop. I remember that. Like Deepwater Horizon, it's like, you remember the oil thing that blew up? And they're like, I, I tried it so. for you. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> like in all the posters, we've talked about it before, it was just them like covered in oil. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to find it now because I love that one of Kirk, Doug, um, uh, Kirk Douglas. Uh, Kurt Russell. Kurt Russell. What the fuck is the matter with me? <laughs> yeah. Um, no, but that movie costs like a hundred million dollars. Very expensive. Looks good. Looks really good. Visual I think it's effects are incredible. Um, but uh, Lone Survivor had done so well. I'm so oily. Yeah. Oily boys. <laughs> but Lone Survivor is like an American, a proto-American sniper. Right. Like the, that movie doing that well is like a, was the an, first a sign, the tip. Yeah. Dylan O'Brien. I forgot he's in it. I've yeah, got no oil on me. Gina I saw Rodriguez? him on the street a few months ago. How Dylan tall O'Brien. Is he? He's not short. Gina. Not tall. She's Gina. been oiled. Yeah, I'm gonna keep going. Okay. Dylan was like talking into his. Do they have a character oh, per, uh, poster for just oh. oil? That'd be good if it was just a puddle of oil. <laughs> oil. No, this is the best one. Like a slick on the Malkovich. Yeah, Malkovich. Malkovich. <laughs> Puckered mouth. Oil him up. Do you think when he walked into the mm. studio that day, he was like, "Oil me up, fellas." Oil me up. <laughs> Look at his pursed lips. He's pursing him, and then Wahlberg. Yeah, I mean, you know, looks mad that he's oiled. I got oil all over me. Where'd this oil come from? All right, come on. We got another show. Okay, number three. Into. <laughs> <laughs> number three. Oh, is another ben movie. Ben has to record Henry Kissinger's podcast. Uh, what? Number three. Another movie that doesn't exist from this like exact moment in time. Yeah. I think a lot of those Trump like election movies, you know, movies yeah. 
right around then, the fall of 2016, people are like, I don't like to think it about it. It was a simpler time. We like, were Allied is then. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. Like movies that just got oh, swallowed Allied, into the deep. one of the top 10 films of 2016. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, My nominee for best screenplay? Yeah, I remember. Yeah. They're allied. Good. <laughs> screenplay. Movie! <laughs> allied in war, allied in love. Yep. Any other allies there? Uh, Let's slow this down. Allies for the LGBTQ people. <laughs> yes, of course. They, they, are, they are big allies. <laughs> allies for the peculiars. <laughs> what, right. what about the, the plus poster? and LGBTQ plus? There's a P there for peculiar. <laughs> <laughs> um, number three. It's a remake okay. of a remake. Like, you know. A star is born. It's not a star is born. You can't deny that that's a remake of a remake. I won't deny it. This is all that it's I can offer. It's a remake of a game. remake of a remake. Ooh. Keep going. I'm denying it. so many. What, four? Right. Yeah, okay. There's also what price Hollywood. This is a um, remake of a remake. Yeah. Nope. And yes. um, it stars a bunch of people <laughs> who are famous. Is this Orient Express? No, but you know, you're in that, you're sort of in the zone. So is it based on a book? Mm, I don't think so. Is it a franchise? No. It, no. So they've just made the story three times, but they never made sequels to either of the previous They have versions. remade a famous movie. Yes. And that famous movie, which is from a long time ago, was itself a remake of a different famous movie. Oh, uh, Casper of Spirit of Begin. Cor- incorrect. No, the answer's Ben Hur. Incorrect. That really? Was I was movie. talking that was about a summer that. movie. I remember it being like a last week of August. So mm, sure, third. but this is the last week of September. Oh, oh I know what this is. Oh, it's Magnificent Seven. It Magnificent the Seven. They united the seven. They united, <laughs> you know, Ethan Hawke and D'Onofrio, and I forget who else is in that one. I was going to ask you, gun to a head, if Pratt. you could name two more of the seven. Pratt. Well, I know Pratt, you know, Pratt, Pratt Washington. Washington. I think Sarah's guards the villain. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you've got Luke Grimes and Cam. Jigen Day, if you say Will, his name. Will Byun Lee, is that his name? Yeah, right. Storm Shadow from yeah. G.I. Joe, Rise of Cobra. Yeah, he's in there. Number four. The best four. movie I've ever watched on a plane. It's so good. I think we don't we You don't think actually... Magnificent Seven is good? No, G.I. Oh. Joe, Rise G. I. Joe, of Cobra. Right. Yeah, oh, yeah. okay. I, I think we need about. to like start the real like reappreciation of G.I. Joe, Rise of Cobra. If you want to do watch the G.I. Joe movies and never seen They're them. great. Yeah, they are great. Yeah. Like you Joe. want to do a Summer's They're going to cross over with Transformers. Really? Oh, really? They want to do it. They've been wanting to do it for are yeah, those kids. franchises aligned? Yeah, they're Hasbro. Oh, okay. They're both the same company. They've sometimes done crossovers. But there's like a thing in G.I. Joe, Rise of Cobra, where they make a suit that makes you run really fast. <laughs> it's like an exoskeleton that like goes like this, so they look like wind-up toys. Cool. It's great. Summers would be so cool In the cool sequel, outfits. Bruce Willis plays G.I. Joe. <laughs> We've talked about this. Yeah, no, I, I've heard of this. Um... Number four is an animated movie. Okay. Just give me the name. Uh, it's September of 2016. Is it a new release or is it a holdover from it's the summer? It's a holdover. Two weeks old. Two weeks old. So it's, it's in a, August. It's a bit of a flop. and No, September 30th. Oh, right. So it's from early September 2016. It's a bit of a flop. What's the final domestic total? 72. Mm, a bit of a flop. Kind of a flop. <laughs> but it's also about a flock Ugh. of birds. Oh, Storks? Storks? Yeah. Storks. <laughs> Nicholas Stoller's Storks. Yeah, but also co directed by uh, uh, Doug Sweetland, who is one of the best animators at Pixar, and they never let him direct a feature. He's the the um, Presto guy or whatever it's called. Yep. Uh, is Presto? Is that what yes, it's called? Yes, correct. Mm-hmm. And he also did a lot of my favorite animation, Toy Story 2, like Woody's impression of uh, when they play Woody's Roundup. You're a dork. <laughs> Me? Yes. But that sounds... Wait, when they play what he's... I don't remember that. There's a scene where when he's we do like doing his impression and he comes out and he's out. doing his like John oh, yeah, Wayne's no, like walking. That. It's and a really the, good piece of character the, animation. Yeah. Yes. Like tips his hat. Right. See, even I remember that. Right. And yes. then Bullseye does the thing where his, right. his saddle slides off. And by the way, I'm not a dork. I like to identify as peculiar. <laughs> <laughs> Bullseye. I will say Bullseye. Yeah. We stand a legend. You like Bullseye. Bullseye Because cool. we've been arguing a lot about how just Toy Story doesn't work for you. No, and you just admit true. that you've never been able to lack into We were talking about Toy Story at TS4. We were talking the four the other no, day. I, and look, you said, I just don't, I don't get these movies. No, 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 no. Like, come on. No. I've seen the first you one. You were besmirching the good name of Forky. I've seen, well, right. This is what I'm talking about. The new ones. I, not, the, the new first ones. first two. I, yeah. I, well, the first one I saw, I'm sure, a few times. Second one I owned and I've seen many times. American Masterpiece, okay. It's film. certainly the best one. And then the third the one best I saw one, one of movies. Speaking of, uh huh. Number five. Number five. At the box office is uh let me just check my notes. Oh yeah, the greatest film ever made. Oh boy. <laughs> That's I my clue. cannot wait to and take a nap, and I know exactly birds, what this film is. I I wish you hadn't given me yeah, the clue. He knew. <laughs> because he knew. I knew from greatest film. 
And of course, the film is called Sully. That's right. And How you, I spent my Valentine's Day. I was about to say, didn't you recently rewatch Sully? <laughs> my girlfriend was sick. We were staying in for Valentine's really Day. Really holding back. You can't back. say anything Ugh, about it. I know. You can't say anything about it. And we were looking through my movie collection. And I was, in, I was taking a shower. She was looking through my movie collection. Sure. And I was like, what do you want to watch? And she was like, oh, no, I'm up for anything. And I was scrolling through and I was like, I'm going to make a joke that's not really a joke. I'm going to say, well, like, well, of course, the best thing for when you're sick is to watch a little Sully. And she's like, wait, seriously? Because I, okay, I was going to say it, but then I was going to couch sure, it as sure, a joke because right, I thought right. that you owned it ironically. And I was like, um, I once had a conversation with <laughs> Freedom you is spelled S-U-L-L-Y. <laughs> Let's wave the flag, my friend. I once had your conversation, a conversation with your girlfriend in a loud bar where I was like, basically, like, like, Sully, it fucking rules. I love Sully. And she was like, not a good movie. Don't like it. Yes. And, I was, and like, we were doing this for like five minutes. And I was like, what are you talking about? And then I realized she was talking about Tully. She was talking about Tully. <laughs> it was a loud bar. And, she and then I was like, Tully, um, Tully, I can yeah, take her. Like, like, we all agree about like, Tully, but yeah, wait a like, second. Like, Sully, fuck. <laughs> Uh, she was so into uh, Sully, and I was just like, "This is the woman I want to spend the rest of my life with." <laughs> Sully is. You the see best. me, and you see Brace. Sully. Yes. Brace the for the moment where she turned to me and she's like, "The final set piece of this movie is them watching a simulation four times," and I was like, "Yes!" <laughs> uh, birds. I've never seen Sully. Oh my god! I'm sorry. This that's actually I had to come clean. Ben, erase this episode. <laughs> Ben, get the Sully DVD. Sully on the DV. We're going to sit here and watch it live. You have five <sighs> minutes. <laughs> Damn it. I'm going to put it on like um, times that is the 100 office. speed. <laughs> Some so other good. movies we have masterminds. I mean, re a real movies that don't exist zone right oh, now. Oh, yeah. I forgot. I actually didn't forget. I did not know that Storks was a movie. Storks. Yes. Uh, I thought it was like a very well advertised Pixar short. Bridget Jones's Baby. Remember when there was a third <laughs> Bridget Jones movie? Yeah. It just sort of came out. Yeah. Um, she had a baby. I guess so. <laughs> you gotta uh, tell that story. Snowden? Yeah. That's another one that oh. doesn't exist. Is that that's, the Joseph Gordon-Levitt? Yeah. Of course. He, he, never completed, he never completed his trilogy. Unnecessary remakes by fallen from greatness <laughs> American directors of documentaries that won the Oscar. So you've got The Walk and Snowden. You're saying he should do he a third one? He needs one more. Close it out, baby. Yeah, what are some recent Academy Award winners for documentary? Let's find the next Joseph Gordon. Like it, it, yeah, yeah. The exactly. other part of the the trilogy, and it is, has to be directed by a fallen director. Right. Like the other a, part of the trilogy is he puts way too much effort into the accent. And it's distracting. Exactly. Because right. his Snowden voice is also really weird. Well, I don't see him playing. The government is spying on us. <laughs> I don't see him playing Amy Winehouse. But if he did Icarus, he could maybe be like Lance Armstrong or whatever, right? Like I know sure, there was already Foster's a Lance Armstrong been there movie. And yeah. He put a lot on it. <laughs> he did. He's actually trying in that movie. He's because that movie kind of has. He was like, to do. I had to take the performance enhancing drugs. I wouldn't recommend <laughs> that any other actor does it, but I don't know any other way. I to removed act. one of my testicles. Really? <laughs> How about uh, March of the Penguins? He plays a penguin. What uh, else do we have in the last couple of years? Amy Icarus. OJ Made in America. Uh, Citizen Four. He Twenty Feet from Stardom. Searching for Sugar Man. Could he be Sugar Man? Could he play Sugar Man. <laughs> Is that, how would that go over? <laughs> Not well, you're saying? Mm. Uh, we've got something. Inside Job. Remember that one? The yeah. financial documentary. Yeah. Hello, it's me, Sugar Man. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard you've been searching, been searching for me. For me. <laughs> <laughs> you just wanted to bust out your JGL. <laughs> All right. uh, yeah, we're I fine. like writing songs, but I just do it for myself. I don't even care if people buy the albums. Hit record. Um, Hit record. Joe. <laughs> Hit record, Joe. Um, we did it. We talked about fucking Miss Peregrine, and next week we'll talk about Dumbo. Oh, we did it, and I can't wait to take a nap. I'm so proud of you. Dumbo next week. I mean, how do we feel? Like, this is, uh, you know, we still got a couple Burtons left to do, but we've been in this zone for a couple months now. Yeah. This film's a low point. You know, I'd say it this sure is maybe is. his second... I, I don't know. It's one of those things where you go like, it's better than Alice in Wonderland and that's less egregious, but also it's so much less compelling to watch. Right. If Planet of the Apes is definitely bottom of, of the barrel, things. this is either It's better two than the two movies you just named. Or three from the bottom. I think it's third from bottom. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but and you it's know. his most recent film, so it speaks poorly. Right. And who knows? Maybe Dumbo will fucking rock the house. And we'll all be laughing. You know what? I think I no. I do like Dark Shadows better than this because we're recording this in February, so there aren't even any early reviews of Dumbo. Yeah, I like Dark Shadows better than this. No question. No question. Dark Shadows is a mess, but it has like the problem with Dark Shadows is it doesn't make a decision about what movie it wants to be, but at least has 
five different ideas of what movie it could be. I'm very be. intrigued to find out what your Burton rankings are going to be, in fact. Interesting. You know what I mean? Because actually, yeah. it's a lot of movies. There's yeah. a lot of potential for variants. What's your favorite Burton, Emma? Um, Probably Edward Scissorhands. It's a good call. I love that movie. Commonly Gentleman. <laughs> snip, snip. Snippy snips. I also ben. love Big Fish. I've never cried so hard. Yep. Oh, I've cried at Big Fish. Yep. It, 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 it gets me every time. You gotta big catch fish. the fish. I gotta catch With that the big crying. fish. You gotta reel it in. Ben, um, yeah. You have more Burtons to record with us. But yes. this is the last Burton you're gonna have to do uh, yeah. for the listener. Sure. <laughs> yes. Final thoughts? Yeah. So over it. <laughs> so over it. Ben's so, gonna love our next. So I, you're looking forward to Penny Marshall. You like the change of pace of Penny Marshall? Yeah, sure. I, <laughs> I've I love the early Burton. Sure, like they're masterpieces. Yeah. They're they're they were they're nostalgic for me as as being a young person. I remember seeing right. them. But man, he. He's got to stop. I don't know. Maybe it won't be good. <laughs> yeah. I hate all his late period movies. I've hated. I'm Big Fish is like you know. Uh, I was on the fence re seeing it recently. Yeah. But then from there, I have a feeling I'm gonna hate Alice in Wonderland and Charlie and the fucking Chocolate Factory. I think you're gonna like Charlie. You might like Charlie. I think you're gonna like but Charlie. I, I think since I gotta call it weird. now, I'm gonna say Tim Burton, take a look in the mirror. All right, take a good long look in yeah. the mirror and stop making movies about childhood. Yeah, but that also, you go, like, he doesn't seem like he's that excited by making movies about childhood, so maybe it's just that's what everyone offers him. Stop making movies. Or stop yeah. making movies. I mean, there, there's, Let's like, see the, what you know, I don't though. love it, but but the whole Tarantino, like, I'm gonna make ten and then, like, retire sure. is essentially a safeguard against this. Like, yeah. he's like, I never want to get to a point where I'm just making a movie. Totally. Mm-hmm. And I you're agree like, with that. is there anything bad about like there are tons of like old directors where it's just like, oh, he just died this year. I thought he died twenty years ago. Right. And it's because they just stopped they just making stopped. movies twenty years ago. Yeah, he gave it a rest. Yeah. Give it a rest, Timmy. Yeah. I don't know. Sandwich or make, shop. Maybe, maybe fucking Dumbo. Be what great. if he opened a spooky I think sandwich Dumbo's shop? Be good. Sandwiches. That would be fun. Right? <laughs> I would like that. You chop him with big scissors or something? Yeah, Ooh. you're like, I don't know. Is there like other stuff he could do? <laughs> I don't know. They can have themed names. Like, Bubba hey, Gump. More like uh, scissor hand sandwichery. Timmy Scissorhams? Yeah. Hands? Oh, okay. Do you guys want to get a hands? scissor hand sandwichery? <laughs> <laughs> you're back to your witchery, Ben. I am. That's a tease for future Patreon. For literally for June. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, we're done. Come on, enough. Yeah. I gotta pee. Okay. Okay. Bye. Well, wait, wait a second. <laughs> wait, no. Sit down. <laughs> sit <laughs> down. Go on. Attention must be paid. Okay. Stefanski, thank you so much for yeah. being well, here. Thank you for being here. Emma. You're the yes, best. Honor. Thank you for reading, Mrs. Perkin. You didn't read the other books. No, I just read that one. Okay. A quirk. It's a quirk. It's a. It's quirky. At a publishing house. Yes. Okay. They did all the. Uh, Is it the same? The Pride and Prejudice and Zombies. I was gonna say all of those yep. are quirk. Yeah, it's a lot right, of that. Take a right, thing that's public domain right. and rework it, and then you own the IP. Rolling my eyes. Tim Burton also produced uh, Abraham Lincoln uh, Vampire. Vampire Slayer Hunter, because he was like, that sounds like the kind of fun genre movie I would have watched on TV, and then he saw it and was like. Oh, you're gonna make it like cool, <laughs> like quote unquote cool, <laughs> right? Right. Like I think his thought was like, oh, it's like David Carradine, yeah, or it's and like the what's sets it cost a dollar. Like Billy Jack meets the Wolfman, or right? Whatever, you know, some bullshit like that, right? right. He's like, yeah. oh, it's like speed ramping. <laughs> he like, I mean, runs he hired Mister Speed horses. Ramp. Like, what are you supposed to do? Timur no, that was Tamar was like, whatever, can yeah. you produce this for yeah, me? Uh-huh. He didn't hire him. Right. He was like, Tim, please help me. I love speed. <laughs> ramping I yeah just means like putting some speed ramps in a suitcase and pressing it down do you remember when like deadline every day was work. having like abraham lincoln vampire hunter it's down to five finalists yeah i do it was like superman and abe lincoln vampire hunter were being cast at the same time and it was like matthew good is taking himself out of consideration <laughs> for lincoln so he can double down on superman and then it was like ben walker's taking himself out of superman <laughs> right. so that he can be the lincoln swoop in yeah this movie that's gonna make eight dollars yeah maybe movies don't matter well thank no, you all do. for listening oh you're right thank you. and you know what that will be reaffirmed next week when we love Dumbo. <laughs> or at least we're like, it's pretty good. Well, no, you know why it has to be? Because 2019 is the year of only good movies. Every movie is great in 2019. Get with it. This is my big rally and cry. Okay. 2019, right. hashtag every movie is great. All the movies are good. All Got the it. movies are good. Let's let all movies be good. Okay. Thank I'm you down. all for listening. Please remember to rate, review, subscribe. Stay peculiar. Stay peculiar. For the love of God, stay peculiar. 
Keep that fire in your belly like Asa Butterfield. Keep those bees in your mouth. <laughs> you got to keep them in your mouth and, and feed that turkey leg into the back of your skull. Uh, also, here are some other things you can do. Go to blankiesatreddit.com, the most peculiar subreddit on the internet. Buy some very peculiar shirts on Tee Public. Like, for example, if you turn people to stone, put some shirts over your face. Yes. Uh, thanks to Andrew uh, Fergudo, who has the peculiar power to generate good tweets. Thanks to Lane Montgomery, who has the peculiar power to write us a theme song in, like, two hours. Uh, thanks to uh, Joe Bone and Pat Rounds, who are just uh, peculiar people. Go to the Patreon. Oh, go to pa Patreon. Certainly, if there's ever been an episode that incentivized you to spend more money to listen more <laughs> of us talking. Uh, Emma, be on a commentary. You okay. live, like, next door to me. Yeah. Okay. Oh, you live next to Big Nice? She lives real close to my house. Yeah. Really? It's for sure true. Which is your favorite MCU movie? That's a really hard question to answer. Thor Ragnarok, maybe? Wow. Come on, Thor. Come on, Thor, because we don't love it. Yeah, really? that's right. You can cheerlead. You I love cheerlead. that movie. Well, you can cheerlead. Oh, my God. Okay, so look, if, if that's not an exciting plug, I don't know what is. Mm -hmm. Thor Ragnarok's good. <laughs> yeah, see, now now we're getting into it. All right, cool. Uh, ben is giving me a death glare. Uh, Bill Clinton is coming in next to record. Uh, and Ben is literally <laughs> no smiles blinking at me. He is telling me through Morse code that he wants me to die. <laughs> His face is getting really red, too. And as always, mm -hmm. I can't wait to take a nap. Okay.